It's been a year since we've covered this value topic. Let's have a wee look and see what's changed. Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another VPUB. Welcome to another Thursday night. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Wonderful to see you all uh, waiting patiently outside the VPUB doors for us to get started. It's been about a year since I covered this topic. It was September last year. And uh, yeah, I was caught out by a, co a comment that came in from the lounge. Somebody just asked me outright where the value lies. In Scotch whiskey. This was a year ago. Now, a couple of years before that, I'd written an article and I'd put it on the website and I'd talked about uh, the value in Scotch whiskey back in late 2016. And I was amazed when I looked into things again how much it had changed. So last year in September, I thought, wouldn't it be good if I remember to do this as a kind of annual thing, see how it changes year by year. And I think it's good to always kind of, as we get carried away with whiskey, as we enjoy our whiskey journey and as we kind of, um, you know, switch it up from time to time, spend a little bit more, we get tenderized, the prices rise a little bit. I think it's good just to spend a little bit of time focusing on price. And I know I've been a bit of a broken record in recent VPUBs and videos and things, and there's been a lot of focus, me talking about price, price, price. But honestly, it's a big deal. Whiskey is an expensive thing. Just to be participating in it, just to be involved, it's expensive. And I think it's a good thing to focus on. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That's what we're kind of going to cover. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to jump in and welcome some beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. I hope you're all very well. Let's get this chat up and see who's in this evening. Uh, Whiskey Central is here. Now, I know I'm, I'm going to get it right this time. Shyla. Whiskey Central is Shyla. And Nick is Whiskey 101. The logos are slightly similar. They both start with whiskey. Uh, I apologize for the confusion last week. I, I hopefully, I've got it right tonight. Nice to welcome you, Shyla. I hope you're doing very, very well. Chris Amir is in, as is Neil Laverty, William Davilar, Kilted Moose Scott, wonderful. Mr. Ed, Michael, Sunday Evening Scotch, Daniel Vermas over in Hungary, Vicky Thompson in the east of Scotland. Uh, how's Grant, Vicky? I hope you're both doing very well. Thomas Elmer is here, you star. You're in as Thomas Elmer tonight. Where's Ross Fudd? Where is Ross tonight, Thomas? Um, wonderful to see you, my friend. Always good to welcome you in here. Brian Kilco is here. Good to see you, my friend. I hope you're keeping well. Stu Baby is here. Wonderful, Stu. Good to see you. Jeffrey Pedersen. Good to see you, Jeff. Um, I don't know if people call you Jeff. Good to see you, Jeffrey. <laughs> you keep me right, my friend. NZ Anime Manga is here. Good to have you, my friend. James Burgoyne as well from the Nottingham Whiskey Association. Have a wee look at this. Aquavite is known for gamifying whiskey. <laughs> I understand that. But I got this really cool little sample just with a question mark on it from James, James Burgoyne at the Nottingham Whiskey Association. And it's uh, followed by a number of envelopes uh, covering one sample. So um, I don't know what I'll do here. I, th I think I'll maybe try this. Maybe the next patron only lock-in or something. I'll do this wee game um, and see what James has in store for me, kind of gamifying whiskey. Thanks, James. Thanks for sending it. And thanks for putting the effort in, my friend. Nice to welcome you to the VPUB. Malt Minion is here. Good to see you, Chuck. Always a pleasure to have you in. Um, hey, the Sniper King, Cressamere. I think I've mentioned you already, but it's always brilliant to see the Sniper King in attendance. We will be playing a game of Is It A Space Side tonight? I've got a couple of guests in the background that are here specifically for that. Well-known members of the community. It'll be a nice for you to meet them tonight. Um, and I think I'll bring them in quite early tonight and then we can kind of dedicate the, the chunk of, the centre chunk of the VPUB to the topic and close out uh, with the quiz at the end and bring my guests in again to join us for that. What do you think of that? Ewan Walker is here. Ewan, that looks like a new name. If it is, welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Evening to you too. My friend James Hope is in. James, it must be getting near the tickly time. You've got about four days left. 
till the due date of your baby. I hope everything's going well. It's good to welcome you into the VPUB, James. I know you've probably not got a dram in your hand. Radek is here. Good to see you, my friend. How are you, Radek? Good to welcome you in again. Dogs have no uncles. Brilliant name. Always nice to see you, my friend. Antonio C. Amy in the States. Wonderful, Amy. Always great to see you in. Um, I hope you're doing very well, and I hope that George, Mr. Kaplan, is doing well too. Uh, Odd Johan Lundberg, good to see you, Johan. Wonderful to have you. Akshay Jetley is in as well. Good to see you, Akshay. Orange Rule, Rule is here. Frank Pete Head was in very early, along with Hellswood and a couple of other guys, nice and early on. Good to have you. Jimmy Leg, of course, Jimmy. I'm always looking for that wee Spring Bank, spring bank logo. And uh, uh, there isn't a valid VPUB until Jimmy Leg is in attendance as well. So many of you tonight, um, I'm not going to be able to give everyone a shout out as per usual, but if you are trying to get trying to get my attention, uh, just type Aquavite and it should be highlighted and I'll be dipping in and out of the chat throughout the, the night. So yes, price, uh, value. Um, one of my guests tonight is uh, Gregor from uh, France, Greg's Whiskey Guide. Um, and Greg asked me beforehand, is English is a second language? And he said, Roy, when you're talking about where's the value, do you mean the price? What's the cheapest price? Or are you talking about something else? Because in French, it's two words. And I want to be very clear. In order to determine the value, we have to be aware of the price. We have to know how much the thing is going to cost. But the cheapest does not always bring the value. It's whiskey we're talking about. It's no different from anything else in life. The price can help with the value, but it's not everything. But let's start with the price. Let's set out some benchmarks. Let's do some kind of research and, and do some checks and measures and see how we're doing price-wise. Then we can use a bit of discussion, a bit of a, a community intelligence to look at the whiskies at the prices that they're being uh, sold for right now and determine which of those expressions and which of those ranges, which of those producers perhaps bring the value. That's kind of what we're going to try and do tonight. Nothing is scientific. There are lots and lots of caveats. At every single stage of what I'm going to talk about tonight, there are huge caveats. Some of these whiskies may not exist where you are. Certainly, if they do, they will be a different price than we pay in the UK. There's no question. You'll see that some of the measures and some of the ways I've been checking the prices are pretty black and white brutal in some cases. But it's it's just a mechanism. It's a bit of a lever, a tool to try and shake out where uh, the prices, uh, where the good prices exist. And just to see if we can maybe manage to discover a surprise or two. Um, and you might be surprised, um, as, as surprised as I was, that there are a couple of surprises in there. Service of Laughs is in, that's uh, Andreas in Norway saying, I opened a Cadenhead's 12-year-old blend yesterday. I'd say that's really good value. Uh, if you go back to my Aquavite blind challenge that was set for me by Aaron McFault, I think that video was released late 2018, maybe early 2019, late 2018. You'll see that the Cadenhead's 12-year-old blend, one of one of those was used in that lineup. Um, and I remember it being particularly lovely. I've tried it a few times since then. I've never owned a bottle, but there's always a, bo a bottle floating around somewhere. And it's a pretty good thing. But it's from Cadenhead's. It's, it's a fairly reliable uh, independent bottler, we have to say. Shane Lay's in saying, I think there's a lot of value in independence. Good quality, good presentation, and good prices for some, but it can be hit and miss. I did a little bit of work, and I quickly realized that I was building work towards a future VPUB topic. Three years ago, four or five years ago, certainly in very recent times, independent bottlers are where you went to get more engagement, more natural presentation at a better price than the official bottlings. I put it to you that today, those days are gone. I was shocked at the amount of independent bottlings out there that are charging more than the official bottlings, honestly. I know that sometimes they're higher ABV. I know that sometimes they're more naturally presented. Maybe we're speaking about something rare, something celebrated, single casks, uh, small batch releases. 
There's lots of reasoning for the prices moving about all over the place. But the days of finding better value and cheaper uh, buying from an independent with huge amounts of caveats and exceptions, as I've already qualified, of course. Those days are gone. I, I'm quite surprised, honestly, at the prices from some of the independents, some of the celebrated independents. I think the reason for that is that the market that is growing and continuing to grow is the enthusiast market. So the independents are seeing a demand for their product and they're able to charge more than they ever have done in the past. That's not what I've researched tonight. That's not what the topic is tonight, and it's not what we're going to discuss. But Shane, I understand your point. There is still good value to be discovered in the independents, and we work together as a community, as we do for everything, to discover where they are. Uh, David Owen is saying, I would say that Buna Havin 12 is still a good value whiskey. Absolutely. I'm actually sipping an independent tonight. Just to get started, it was actually a recommendation. Um, this is only the second dram I've had out of this bottle. It was a recommendation from a friend, a whiskey barista on Instagram, James. Uh, Strathmill, 2007 Strathmill. It's 43%, still quite light. Uh, bottled in 2019, just last year. So September to July. So just under 12 years, 11 years old. Um, not as sweet as the official, uh, I would say, Strathmill from Flora and Fauna, semi-official. Uh, this is this is a, a grassier, lighter, uh, drier experience, but I think it's a perfect wee dram uh, to start the night. Hey, so tell me what's in your glass, wherever you are. Cheers. Welcome to everyone. John Della Cuisine is saying a little bit of an open door, but I think Kilcarran brings great value at this time. It's why it's my producer of the year last year, Kilcarran. There's nothing to talk about. Kilcarran is often, it's almost like it's a little bit of a skunk works for, for Mitchell's, it's experimental things that are going on in, in there. And, you know, that kind of wonderful teasing they did over the years, bringing out the work in progress releases. And then they brought out the 12 year old. And wow, it's the 12 year old. If anything, it's only got better, honestly. Great value as well. Uh, they brought out amazing value in their cast strength eight year old series. N nothing quite as amazing as the one that came out late 2019 from uh, Richard Oloroso. Sherry casks, amazing stuff. Very fair prices as well, but it instantly disappeared. And what we're noticing from Springbank generally just now. Um, so that's Glengyle and Springbank, so Long Row, Hazelburn, mostly Springbank, and Kilcarran, is supply issues. The 12-year-old disappeared earlier this year. Um, it's, on, it's in stock in one of the online retailers right now and out of stock in the other one. And you just try and get your hands on Springbank, official Springbanks right now. It's really tricky. So unless your local specialist retailer has some stock, you're kind of searching around the internet to see who's got it. Um, so I think Springbank are also seeing that surge and demand for naturally presented, fair and on. And I wish them well. I just wish they would make a wee bit more and make it more available to me <laughs> in Scotland. John Della Cuisine is saying a little bit of an open door. Oh, sorry, that's the one I just picked up. John, um, I agree with you. Coquerin is fantastic uh, value. Antonio C is saying best value is Coquerin followed by Bal Blair Vintage Series. Now discontinued and lost, unfortunately, the 04 travel uh, uh, value 1990. Uh, the 1990 was a cracker and it was a great price as well. Hills would have seen Johnny Walker Black and Ginger Ale in our glasses taking it easy this evening. Let's have a five hour drive tomorrow. You're sitting in Keswick, Helen and Andy. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I know the weather has been pretty good to you, all things considered. Um, I hope you've had a nice time. Uh, Liam Diamond is saying, not as cheap as Canada, in Canada as I like it to be, but Lag Villain 8 never seems to disappoint. Liam, stay tuned. There's a there's an interesting thing in the spreadsheets tonight, and uh, I don't think I'm being entirely fair to Lag Villain 8, but I think in the context of this channel and me, everybody knows I love Lag Villain 8. <laughs> um, but it's interesting where it comes from a price perspective. Daniel Gray is saying, I'm enjoying Loch Lomond 18, fits in the value bracket as I was able to pick up for £50. 
Wow, which is a lot of whiskey for the price. You getting Loch Lomond 18 for £50 is incredible. Um, last year, when I brought Loch Lomond 18 onto this very broadcast, talking about this very subject, um, I talked about Loch Lomond 18, and that was when it was priced at £75, and I was celebrating it at that price. Again, I'm going to talk about Loch Lomond 18 tonight a wee bit later. Paul Tabernor is saying, good value doesn't mean a damn thing if you can't get it. It's exactly right, Paul. Um, we can talk about the honest whiskey. We talk about how wonderful Spring Bank is, the 10-year-old, the 15-year-old, the 18-year-old, the 12 cast strength. It's amazing whiskey. You can't buy it. It's, it's frustrating. It really is. Especially when I've visited the States and you go into Total Wine um, <laughs> or Specs or one of these big, huge, massive retailers and they've got Multiple long row reds sitting there next to each other on the shelf. All the spring banks. They've got local barley spring bank just sitting there on the shelf. My, my luggage was not big enough to take the whiskey home that I wanted to bring home. So it's, it's kind of frustrating, but it's the nature of it. It's just how it is, I guess. It's just how it is. Um, I think we could work to make it a bit better, honestly, but that's me being frustrated. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me. Helen's, uh, Helen is saying, always find Buna have in core range. Great value for money. Had a great week. Thanks. I I think uh, Buna have in, uh, they've got good, decent non-age statements. Yes, the 12-year-old is absolutely solid. 39, 40 pounds, nothing to talk about. Great value. Uh, the 18 has had a huge jump in price recently, which affects its value proposition, honestly. Uh, Yash Desai is in. I need you, uh, Yash, to send me an email. I believe you won a sniper coin uh, playing as a space side last week. Um, and I didn't have any way to get in touch with you, my friend. So if you can send your address to whiskey at aquavitae.com, be careful how you're spelling aquavitae with the two Vs, um, I can get uh, your sniper coin sent along to you. I'm just looking for uh, a sniper coin. And I don't have one. Normally, I have them here sitting in front of me ready for a wee game of Is It a Space Side? I don't know where my sniper coin is. Um, but I'm sure you all know what it looks like by now. In, oh, there it is there. I just skipped past it. I've got one of these to send to you, Yash. And I've also got one to send to uh, Sh uh, Shyla at Whiskey Central as well. So if you can send me your address, Shyla, and uh, at whiskeyaquavitae.com, I'll get these sent out to you. I couldn't send them out after uh, the VPUB with Jason last week. Greetings from Bucky, sipping on a Benromac 10. I think it's complex and superb, superb value at under £35. You won't get an argument from me on that one either. Benromac uh, is a fantastic value. A product. Oh, look who's in tonight. We've got Matt. He's saying, cheers, buddy. I hope you're safe. That's Matt at Ear Whiskey. Matt, it's good to hear from you, my friend. I hope you're keeping well and safe too. I hope life is going well for you. Thank you very much for your virtual gram, Matt. And slanchy to you, my friend. Nice to welcome you into the VPUB. Anyway, I think what we should do first is get the game of Is It A Space Side out of the way have a bit of fun with that, and then we can start to do a bit of deep digging and get some value dirt under our fingernails and try and fathom where uh, the value is and which producers and which expressions are bringing the good value as we sit in 2020. And spend a second comparing that to 2019 when we were sitting discussing this very same thing a year ago. Kevin Bryant is saying, evening Roy, sipping on a Buna having Tocha Kada. I hope you're enjoying it, my friend, Kevin. Nice to welcome you in. And Alistair McPhail is saying, hope you had a great time with Lynn and the Waynes. It looked like you were enjoying yourself. Last weekend, I managed to take a wee trip up. The lockdown thing is becoming more and more claustrophobic, honestly. We're not allowed to go into each other's houses now. But we managed to find a wee house up in the space side, close to the Whiskey Rev, and it had an outdoor area with a, a little fire pit um, and some outdoor decking and things. So the, the Whiskey Rev and his family were able to come around and, and hang out outside. Um, and I was able to open a couple of bottles from the special releases this year. I bought three bottles this year. I spent far too much money, but I was really confident that they would be good. And two out of three are fantastic. And um, one of them, I'm still trying to get my head around a wee bit. Um, so I'm loving the Cardew and the Craigenmore and the Talisker 8 that's from a rum cask this year 
Um, I know people are going to love that. I know people love Talisker. If you love Talisker, you're going to love that eight-year-old. You're going to love it. But for me, it was a bit too much Talisker, <laughs> which I know doesn't make sense. Um, but it was quite spirity, very sweet. And I don't know if the sweetness is coming from spirit or from uh, rum cask. Um, so I'm still trying to understand it, but it's far too early. I've had two drams out of the thing, so give me some time with it. Whiskey Central is saying, uh, so his email is whiskey at aquavitae.com. That's exactly right. Exactly right, Shyla. Send me your address um, if you'd like to receive your, uh, is it a space side glass topper in coin? Yeah, I'm going to invite my friends in to join me here. I'll invite them in one at a time. I've got two. I'm going to play a game each. Remember that you are also playing in the lounge as well. The first person to guess in the lounge in the live chat what the whiskey uh, that's trying what the whiskey to be guessed is <laughs> um, also wins a coin and people are also joining me live tonight to win a coin as well. The first guy I'm going to welcome in is uh, a guy that's been here for a long, long time. You're very familiar with him. You know him. He's now got his own YouTube channel. He's got his own website and he's very active on social media as well. I'm going to go head over to France and welcome in my friend. Uh, just give me a thumbs up, Greg, to make sure that you're okay. Excellent. Hey. Greg, nice Hi, to welcome you to the meetup, my friend. How are you? Yeah. It's strange not to be in the chat for once. <laughs> it's wonderful to, to not have you in the chat. It's wonderful to hear that amazing French accent. Nice to welcome you behind the bar at the VPUB, Greg. Thank you Great so much. You. Now you've kind of you've kicked things off. You're doing your own thing now. You've always had a website. You've always evangelized yeah. and blogged and shared information Since about whiskey through the web. 2013. 13. Right. Seven years. And now you've migrated into video and you're doing video content, right? Well, it's it's the word. In fact, I'm not putting a lot of content in the website. It's it's a bit old to keep up with it. So I'm mostly working on video. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's you have to follow what you're having fun with. And if you're, I know it's difficult for you because you're doing everything in English or the majority of the content yeah, in English. No editing as well. I'm uh, I, I'm scared of editing. I I start. I tried, but I cannot. So. I'm trying to find tricks to avoid editing. Yes. I don't know how, honestly, how much time it can last. It's really strange because I came at it the opposite way around. I through I through know. my work through my job, I had to earn had to learn the editing side. I mean, I, I'm not really fantastic at editing. It's not a professional good, skill. Good. But I earned, I learned the editing first, um, and then making filming the content came came later it's amazing how much of the technical side you have to learn to do this it really is <laughs> and then I, already, Greg, I hope you'll forgive me for saying it's not just learning anymore it's learning and remembering <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you're there i, I don't know I think, I think we're a similar age yet more or less uh, you know why I'm, I'm born in 1965. oh wow in that yeah. case, uh, you're a few years my senior. Wow. Life must be good in France, my friend. Oh, not so much, but with some things behind me, maybe a bit more, with moderation. <laughs> Absolutely. You. Whiskey, uh, is there anything it can't do? <laughs> I, I have the first website, by the way, which has a page uh, devoted only to uh, health issues and to explain responsible drinking. <laughs> no, I think it's an important thing, and I think um, I, I mentioned it last week. Uh, what I tried to do is I put on I put a limited amount of glasses out on the table, so that I could control what I was going to have because I knew I was going to be hanging out with Jason. Um, and it's something that I think whiskey can help you with because you're you're pouring such small measures, sometimes yeah. really high proof, really high ABV whiskey. And it's all about the tasting and the savoring and slowing down. No, I need to more to yeah, enjoy. Yeah. But you, but you hit the nail on the head. You're absolutely right. It's about responsible mm -hmm. drinking. Yeah. Are you ready to play a game yeah. of it? Yes, yes, yes. Of course. And I believe. I believe I am asking you. Yes. Yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> no problem. 
I'm going to pull up uh, the countdown. The challenge is on me tonight. So I've got 10 questions to guess a single malt whiskey, core range product available everywhere that Greg has. Everywhere, everywhere. I don't know, but uh, in many shops and online shops, etc. If it's core range, as long as it's core range, that's yes, right. Yes, it is. It is. And I've got 10 questions to guess what that whiskey is. Greg can only answer yes or no. Um, yeah. and, and the reason we call it is a space side is because that kind of <laughs> cuts the landscape in half, more or less. So it's a good place to start. Greg, let's give it a wee go. And uh, yeah. of course, I'm just going to go right ahead and ask, yeah. is it a space side? No. <laughs> oh, wow. Is it a Highland? No. I'm sure you're going to find it. Is it an Isla? No. Oh, I'm tearing <laughs> through these lives here. Oh, you're you're going to make it, I'm sure. Is it, is it a Campbelltown? Not either. Okay, so it must be a Lowlander. By process of elimination, it's Lowland. Yes. Um... <coughs> So we've got. Yeah. I, I know what's your next question. I kind of heard it. it might help you. Is it one of uh, the. No, I'm not going to tell. Don't questions. worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking about the Lowland. Is it a Bladnock? No. Oh, wow. So th there's only really three main there's ones not so left. Many. You forgot a question. You, I'm going to help you. You always ask to to the us. Big four. Is it one of the big four? Okay. In that one. case, no. Is it Elsa Bay Sweet Smoke? No. <laughs> it's an easy one, if I may say, but not so much. Maybe I don't know. Is it? It's Glen Kinshi 12? No. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Where well, we are, two, three questions. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Ochentoshin? No. I'm sorry. I, mu I must have mentioned the distillery then. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I uh, watch the chat. So it's going to be it's going to be one of the newer distilleries. Then it has to be one of the the distilleries in Fife. So you probably leading me down Strathern. It can't be Daft Mill. You have to choose. You have to choose. We can't buy Daft Mill. Could be <laughs> Kings Barns. Uh, you have to is, pick one. Is it? Um, And someone asked in the chat, no, it's single malt, it's not grain. It's the game, right? Only single malt. Absolutely, absolutely. Is it is it Strathairn? No. Okay, don't there's time yet, don't worry. Someone's got it. One more question to ask, and then yeah. I get I get to I get to give guess one more time. Take your time, Roy. Take your time. Is it one of the five distilleries? Yes. Okay. You wouldn't ask me Daft Mill. Nobody can buy Daft Mill, Greg. You can, I don't can. have. I, I have a sample um, somewhere. That's all. Okay. From another French guy, Christophe Calderac. You know the guy. Christophe, yes, he sent me a Daft Mill. Well. Yeah, a generous, generous 2006 man. to open this little sample. I haven't opened it yet. I King's have something. Arms. There you go. <laughs> it's the dirty drum <laughs> right on the on the edge. Well done, Roy. <laughs> you had so, me on the ropes, Greg. You had me on the ropes. King's yeah, This is this is where you this is where the community can catch me out to, to go into these brand new distilleries that have just I come along. I told you, I told you I wanted to highlight a beautiful packaging and beautiful content and uh, something more genuine than some other new distilleries uh, with 90% uh, ex-bourbon cask and only 10% STR. 
shave toasted and rechired wine, yeah. rechired wine barrels. So, and 40, 46% natural color, uh, non chill filter, etc. And four years old. Four years old. I've got, farms I have. I've got some cake farms you make, and I've got a bottling yeah. that was an exclusive bottling for the Good Spirits Company. Um, very spirit forward, very light and crisp and clean, very cereal. Um, yeah. But this one, but very custardy, very, uh, very pleasant with a hint of red fruits on the background, vanilla, some sweet spices, super balanced, beautiful drum. So want it. But you, you found it. I was sure you will find it. Just just on the right on the end. Well done, right? <laughs> well, you said you were confident that I would find it, but that was very close, Greg. You had me on the ropes. I thought I was lost. I thought I was lost. So you don't you, you don't have it? I don't remember you 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 have it in your collection, Roy. No, the only one I have is a single cask from the Good Spirits Company. Oh, I don't okay, have okay. Bottling, any of the standard bottlings. But uh, um, we we agree you can find it on Whiskey Exchange, Master. No, of yes, Exchange. absolutely, absolutely. So it's a valid uh, and, choice. <laughs> yes, absolutely, and it's not. You didn't force me to ask uh, because what's happening is that these young distilleries haven't really carved out what you would label as a core range yet, so they tend to have releases. And I think it's going to be difficult for them to keep um, uh, repeating the release for, for year after year. It's going to be a while until they have enough mature stocks, I think. It's going to be interesting to see whether they, they do come yeah, out with sure. a repeatable core yeah. range product. But it, King's Barnes... Sorry? sorry it, it is core range, but it still states limited release, Roy, mind you. Yes, that's right. That's my it's point, is that they're going to just... Because as they release product, the the, the yeah, product like they have the is maturing in the packaging. Yeah, sure. Well done, Greg. A nice one you to highlight. You didn't expect this one, right? Greg, my friend. You didn't Sorry? expect this one. You didn't expect this one uh, for me to pick, right? I did not. When I when I was in the Lowlands, I thought it's one of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you took me up to Fife, and uh, there's a whole bunch going on up there. So I, I well was done. very close to visit it in Lindor. Where I visited Lindor Abbey yeah. Distillery, and I ha didn't have the time, but I was very curious, and I tried a new make prior to this release, and I loved the new make and the release, so I wanted to highlight it. Uh, at some Fantastic. <laughs> you, you you almost highlighted it by catching me out, buddy. Greg, thank you very much. If Please no, stay no, in the background and join us for the quiz at the end, my yeah. friend. Sure. Thank you so much. Cheers, Greg. You're welcome. And now I'm going to uh, head right across the Atlantic for the second round of Is It a Space Aid? Wow, that was close. I really felt that one there. And I'm going to welcome in the whiskey influencer, Tim from New York. Tim, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Roy? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I almost get I almost get beaten there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that was close. Uh, when you when you were saying it was easy, I, I thought that was actually pretty hard. Mine is actually pretty easy. So you know, if uh, uh, no uh, no spoilers, <laughs> don't be leaving up any garden paths. So I'm I'm. It's clear that I'm clearly asking you as well. So I've yeah. got ten questions. Yeah. Um, uh, with yes or no answers for, to determine a whiskey that you have on hand. How do we know you, Tim? You've been in, in and around the community for a while now. We've been enjoying your company in the VPubs for a long time. But you're mostly active on Instagram, right? Yeah, right now I'm uh, solely on Instagram. I don't have any blogs or YouTube or uh, website even. So it's just, just Instagram for now. <laughs> and don't speak too soon. You never know where whiskey okay. leads you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you were talking about that over your left shoulder there. You've got a cabinet that uh, only mere months ago, that was a lot lighter, right? Yeah, no, I got uh, basically my, my whole, uh, you know, uh, collection here was developed over the last about year and a half. So, I mean, it's uh, gotten uh, a little out of control, but luckily my uh, my wife is okay with it. So, uh, good, good. We'll see what goes from here. But you're enjoying it, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I love uh, collecting. I love uh, buying new stuff, trying new stuff, and sharing, of course. Okay, give us an example of one of the standouts that you've bought over the last year and a half then. Uh, I mean, one of uh, my favorite distillery now is uh, Springbank. So, you know, this is a, <laughs> we were just talking about it, but the Springbank 12 is obviously a, a standout. And actually, another one is the uh, Compass Box. 
uh, Flaming Heart. This one has blown me away over the last uh, nice. I love this one. So those are just a couple that I've uh, gotten into recently that I love. Excellent. Wonderful stuff. Yep. So you're you're doing the same as the rest of us, Tim. You're chasing the next epiphany. That's what you're doing right now. That's yeah. your journey. Absolutely. You, you ready for a wee game of Is It a Space Side, my friend? I'm ready. Excellent. You have a core range product on hand and you know the owners, you know the ABV, you know the geography, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. We've got 10 questions to guess what it is. And of course, I'm going to ask, is it a space side? It is a space side, yes. Oh, wow. It is a space side. Okay. This is actually the toughest, the space side thing. Is it owned by one of the big four? And by the big four, I mean Penorica Chivas Brothers, Diageo, Grants, or uh, and who's the fourth? Edrington. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, it is. It is. It's owned by one of those guys. Okay. Um. Oops. Is it is it a Diageo product? No. Oh. Is it a Grant's product? Yes. Okay. So we're down to, we have in Grant's portfolio in Speyside, we have three distilleries, Glenfiddich, Balvenie, and Kininvi. Is it a Glenfiddich? No. Is it a Balvenie? Yes. Is it younger than 15 years old? No. Is it the 17 Portwood? No. Is it, uh, sorry, 17 Doublewood, I meant to say. Uh, is it the 21 Portwood? So we have here. <laughs> it's the Little 21. Bit. Yeah, the 21 Portwood. Excellent. It's the first time it's been on, is it a space side? It's the first time it's been there. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely dram. Mm hmm it's a lovely dram. Do you find it, and I, I'm sorry to say this because I do bang on about this all the time, that's a wonderful whiskey to sit down and enjoy, honestly. Mm -hmm. Do you find that it just would be incredible if it was higher ABV? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And I know they had the uh, the travel retail uh, yeah, exclusive that was like 47 point something percent, but right. I never tried that one, so that would have been great. But, yeah, and then this was actually one of the first uh, – uh, expensive whiskeys I actually bought, um, you know, a year and a half ago when I really got into whiskey. So it's got a, like a special place for uh, for me. No, it is, it is pure indulgence, and I think it is a terrific whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, I think that for me, the travel retail, the 16 triple cast from Bolveni, honestly, they're 17 year old as well. Um, they all kind of just wow, these, these are amazing whiskeys. If they just had a little bit more. If they hung around for a little bit more, a little bit more texture, a little bit mm -hmm. more grip, a little bit more spice on the palate, I think it would just lift those 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 whiskies right up because we do occasionally get the chance to try a higher ABV Bolveni, and I think it is a really nice experience. Yeah, but, yeah. Hey, that's a good one to pick out. It's a good mm -hmm. one to pick out. I don't know. Yeah. What I, to get. I had two left. I think I had two questions left by the time I got that one. Yeah, yeah, and I, I knew it was uh, more of a mainstream, uh, easier to, to guess one, but you know, I figured it was worth a shot. It was definitely worth a shot. Listen, yeah. I don't know if you're on a curfew. Are you able to stay around to hang around for the quiz at the end, my friend? Yes, I should be able to. That would be amazing. I'll welcome you back in to play the quiz at the end. And right. uh, in the meantime, Tim, thanks for stepping behind the bar and challenging me to a wee game of Visit a Space Side. Uh, somebody in the, in the lounge has won themselves a challenge coin on Balvenie 21. Right. Thank you, my friend, and I'll speak to you very soon. Sounds good. See you soon. Well done. There we go. I'm intact tonight. <laughs> I managed to get through that one. So it looks like Che Francis, Alistair Gray, good to see you, and Alistair, good to have you looking after me again. It looks like uh, Che Francis 
uh, has won. Che is a bit of a sniper as well. He's won quite a few coins, I think. So well done, Che, if you were the first one to pick Bulveni 21. Um, and I'm not sure who won uh, on the back of the King's Barnes challenge as well. Akshay is saying good shot. Aye, I was lucky there. I need to pour uh, a wee dram. I've only got a sip left in this. Let me do a wee bit of a screen share with you. Um, and try to show you just a very, very quick makeshift spreadsheet that I put together last year for this show when we were talking about prices. I need to put something in my glass. What will we have? Let's have a wee bit of this. I've spoken about this many times on the VPUB, and it might come up in a bit of a comment tonight, but this is something quite light. Quite easy and certainly very, very inexpensive. This has changed a wee bit from the first couple of bottles I had. I'm pretty sure about that. But we can talk about that in a second. So I'll share this uh, spreadsheet with you. I'm going to do the, the best I can to drop in and out and do some screen shares with you tonight. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I'll try and zoom in a bit here. This is not very visual. I didn't do any slides or anything for this. But hopefully it'll, it'll let you see how I've come uh, to... Uh, arrive at kind of what producers are bringing the best value and things like that. This was a year ago. This was last year. Uh, Luna had the King's Barns. Well done, Luna. Fantastic. Um, well done. Lee is here, Scotch on the Bayou. W wonderful to welcome you in. Leanne, if you are here, I can see that you are. Fantastic stuff. Good to see you. And uh, Whiskey Central saying Roy needs a handicap now. He only gets eight questions instead of ten. You're not the first person to suggest that. So maybe if I get two out of two week after week, I get clipped and I get a handicap, a question taken away each week until I, I maybe lose some. I don't know. We'll need to have a wee think about that if I do get handicapped. We don't want anything being too easy, right? Um, yes, Jimmy's saying only cool kids love spreadsheets. I have to say that I am not big into spreadsheets, and you'll see just how brutally basic my spreadsheets are. I'm going to share this with you. Um, here we have the thing that I used last year. And all I did last year, this was very brutal, very basic. I went through what I considered to be um, producers that were bringing reasonably good value product. And I listed them. And I kind of decided, not necessarily are they bringing us all the A, B, C, Ds, that is good age, good bottling strength, non-chill filtration, D for dye, no uh, colouring added, but at least move towards that. Some of the range is at least a, pointed a little bit towards that. They're bringing a higher ABV, further up the range, that kind of thing. So I gave them a yes if I felt they were doing that. And then I priced them for their 10 and 12-year-old, 14, 15, 16-year-old, their 18-year-old, their 21. And for kicks, last year I did the 25. I don't know how valid that actually is. And from that, we can kind of work out what an average price is for a 10 or 12 year old, 37 pounds. Average price for 14, 15, 16, 61, 89 for the 18 and 129 for the 21. Pretty basic stuff. From that, you have a little look there at the um, knock do. You can see it's green right across. And that's where I managed to discover 116, 115 pounds, or more recently, 114 pounds for Anoc 24. Unfortunately, that's now gone. That bargain, that wonderful, wonderful whiskey is, is no longer available to us. Um, but Anoc and Nocdu, the distilleries Nocdu, the brand is Anoc. They still have fantastic whiskies out there at good value, maybe not forever, based on their stable mates, Bal Blair and Old Pulteney. You can see they're all red across there. And the same for Pulteney went a bit red. Despite their very, very good value entry level, 12-year-old at £29. You can see their 18-year-old at 112 And the ridiculously priced 25-year-old meant that with their repackaging last year. Same as Bal Blair. Uh, the price has just shot through the roof with no real justification that I could see, honestly. And it meant that a lot of people disconnected with them. And I'm a wee bit worried that the same might happen to our friends at Anok. But this was, I was, through this, I was able to uh, dive into 
a few whiskies, a few producers, uh, tease out a few whiskies where I felt uh, value was, was being um, brought uh, last year. This year, I decided to up the ante a little bit because there's no non-age statements in that list. It's all fully focused on the ages. There's no batch strength product. I was looking at 25-year-old. We're not. How, how often do we buy a 25-year-old, honestly speaking? It's not kind of where we are as enthusiast drinkers, right? It's, we're not really after the kind of gift market, the special occasion whiskey very often. So I dropped to 25-year-old to an extent, and I brought in the batch strength, cast strength versions. And at the other end, I brought in the non-age statement, or let's say the young whiskies. And I started to look at that. But then I realized that, that because I had pre-selected the producers based on my assumption of the value, I had lost a lot of potential there from other producers out there. Pernod Ricard, Diageo, um, <laughs> Edsington. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Perhaps you know, you've got to include them, even if you're only including them, to show where the prices sit against the peers on the shelf or in the Scotch whiskey malt landscape. So I'm going to show you this year's spreadsheet in a second and show you how I've upgraded it a little bit um, and, and kind of uh, taken things a wee bit further. Tim Durrapass Whiskey is in. Good to see you, Tim, saying. In the US, we lost our 43-year-old Old Pulteney 12. We still have the 43 Anok 12, but for how long? Why have you lost the Old Pulteney 12? Um, has it been taken away? I mean, we still have it here in its new packaging. Carlos Sanchez is saying, I'm surprised like Villain A is still good value, fortunately. Um, yes, good value. It's interesting to look at the price. It's, it's good that people are enjoying Lagavulin 8 and really, really enjoying it because for an eight-year-old whiskey, they're charging right at the top of what they can charge. I'll show you in a second, Carlos. Neil Cochran is saying, how about a guessing game for the price of the new Anok 24, 25-year-old? I'm nervous, honestly, Neil, really nervous. But surely there's been a market reaction to the repackaging and the crazy pricing for, on Balblair and the crazy pricing that happened to Pulteney. Because there's something interesting I'm going to show you in the next spreadsheet that shows that there's been a very, very slight correction to both those ranges. The prices have dropped a teeny bit. Jamie Brown has bought me a dram. Used to think of auctions as only upping prices, but there are bargains in a 30 to 100 pounds range. Picked up Starward Tawny for 60% of RRP last month. It's happening right across the board, Jamie. Um, auctions. We've seen it with so, so many new releases as well. We've seen it with core product. We've seen it with hyped whiskies. Honestly, before you get in that queue, before you line up for that next big release, that heavily marketed brand new thing and it's shiny new packaging, whatever it may be, pause for a second and think about it in the context of your collection. Do you need it? Is it worthwhile just standing back for a wee bit? and seeing if there's kind of going to be a, a real demand for this thing. Is it really going to be as good as it's promised? How much is it actually going to cost and how much do you actually need it? How much value will it give you? Jamie points out a very good thing there to uh, bear in mind that for those of you that can leverage auctions, always have a wee look at what they're going for an auction as well. Cheers, Jamie. Thanks for your virtual drama, friend. Menno's in multi-mission, he's saying we've got a birthday boy here. Whiskey Jason? No way. Whiskey Jason's birthday. I'm going to raise a wee glass for my friend in Germany and say, Slanche va, many happy returns to you, my friend. I wish I knew how to say that in German, but I'm sure you'll accept it nonetheless. Happy birthday, Jason. Cheers, my friend. Jason's been involved in this channel at somehow, in some way or other. Probably back before the very first ever VPUB live stream, and he's still around today. Fantastic. Also, want to share a raise a wee glass for my friend uh, over in Norway, Rolf. Uh, we know him as Ebhead. We sometimes we used to know him as Whiskey Wolf. He's had a few names, uh, but recently he's been uh, in hospital for a wee procedure. He sent us a very happy picture to show that he was healthy and he's doing well and he's on. Uh, full recovery. Um, but we're thinking about you, Rolf, and we wish you well and hope you get back on your whiskey sipping feet soon. Slanchy, my friend. Cheers, Rolf. 
get well soon. Dogs have no uncles. They're saying Loch Lomond group products appear to be very good value. Glen Scotia 15 is currently £45 on Amazon, for example. I want to just, one of the caveats I'll suggest is that, yes, in the UK, we're, we have the ability to buy whiskey on Amazon. Sometimes we get a good deal and it's cheap on Amazon. Sometimes the prices are inflated on Amazon, honestly. It switches backwards and forwards. Take the deals while you can, by all means. Don't forget your local retailers. Don't forget your local specialists. They have a much nicer environment to stand and have a chat in. Uh, you maybe pay a couple of three pounds more. I don't know, depending on what you're buying, but it's worth it. And it's good to have them there, not just for the stuff that we are going to talk about tonight, but for the off the beaten track stuff, for the independence, for the new things. It's always worthwhile supporting your local retailer. If you don't have a local retailer, remember the whiskey specialists that are out there online able to help you too. Um, but yes, there are bargains to be had on Amazon from time to time. That is a good price for Glen Scotia 15, by the way. Jimmy Legg is saying, uh, what is a local specialist? Sorry, Jimmy, exactly my point. That was kind of in the back of my head as I was saying that. Um, but you don't have the ability to buy from Amazon either. Um, it's, uh, I know it's difficult for uh, you guys in the provinces out in Canada uh, with the state-controlled uh, outlets. Thomas Elmer is saying, I think the Arbegco range are good value. I, I think I think I was actually surprised how good value they are. And there's an argument that Arbeg 10 has become the guardian of Isla now. It's become the, you know, Lagavulin 16 is, is still there. It's still solid. But I, Lagavulin 16 will never meet that fully natural presentation. It's always going to be chill filtered. It's always going to have a dot of colour added. It's always going to be presented at 43%. Despite the fact that I love that whiskey so, and I owe a great, great debt to Lagavulin 16, Ardbeg has done tremendous things with a very nicely presented natural 10-year-old product. 46% ABV, natural colour, um, and it just brings that extra weight, that extra meat, that extra... It just brings a wee bit extra. It's not the same as Lagavulin 16. You can't compare them easily. But they're kind of roughly within the same uh, price band. Six years older for the Lagavulin, very elegant, uh, very, very good gateway whiskey, generally speaking, a very good Isla gateway whiskey and a wonderful ambassador for scotch. But our beg has is, is seen tremendous success with a naturally presented product. Whiskey Jason is saying, I'm drinking a glass of my very first cask bottling, a 30 litre virgin oak cask, only 47 bottles and three years old. Sounds like a terrific way to celebrate a birthday, Jason. I hope you're enjoying it, my friend, superb. Stu Baby is saying his value is very dictated by price. Does this make most grain whiskey and blends value tasting? I'm going to focus on malts and I apologise to everybody out, here, out there who enjoys American whiskies and bourbon and Irish world whiskies. I'm looking at the kind of Scotch landscape here and I think I'm okay doing that because I think that often when things are released into the market, it's not released that it. it's going to cost us this. We need to make this much money. That gives us an end price of this. They look at everything else that's out there in the market already and they price it accordingly, um, oftentimes. I think that the Scotch landscape often sets a tone for age, for presentation and for price. And that's the environment, honestly, quite honestly speaking, that I'm comfortable in. So this is mostly focused on scotch, malt, whiskey. So that I haven't thought really about um, the blended malts that are out there from the Compass Box, the Douglas Lings, a great value from Douglas Ling, uh, remarkable region malts, often really fantastic value. Um, I've not thought about grain or single grain. I've not th thought about um, the hedonisms or blended grains and things like that either. This is just malt whiskey. Let's jump in now and look at how I updated uh, this spreadsheet quickly. Um, just And I started to play with it earlier this week and started to expand it out a wee bit. Um, and what you can see here is all I've done is I've added other. So what I'm talking about other is I was developing this is uh, younger whiskies, non-age statements, that kind of thing. You can see I've uh, put in non-age statement in batch. So that's their cast strength releases maybe. And then I realized I was getting a wee bit ahead of myself and I stopped at this point. I stopped here. Once I'd worked out that if you look at the average prices here, 
The average price of a 10, 12 year old has stayed stagnant or maybe gone up by one pound. That's why it's light red. It's gone in the wrong direction a wee bit. The 14, 15 and 60 year old has stayed static at 61. Uh, if you look at the price of uh, an 18 year old, it looks like it's jumped up. But that's because it's been skewed by some expensive jumps here from Buna Haven for their 18 year old. And Glendronach's 18-year-old went from £90 to £105. But but there you go, 89 to 93. That's jumped up a bit. And then the biggest jump here is from 129 last year to 139 for the mature stuff. This is the 21-year-old category here. But I stopped here at this point because I realized I was doing everything a disservice. I was doing myself a disservice. I was doing the producers a disservice. I was doing you guys a disservice because I was still focusing on those top 19, 18, 19, 20 distilleries that I considered good value from last year. That's not really covering the Scotch whiskey landscape. So I decided to open it up. And uh, uh, this is what I came up with. It's, uh, it's a much bigger animal. It's a much bigger beast. I shared the spreadsheet with my patrons. I can see that there's quite a few of them in actually watching this or looking at this as I share it with you. But let me share this with you here. What I've done here, and as I scroll down, you'll see all of these uh, brands, uh, these producers that have come in, I've opened it up to include Diageo, to include Pernod Ricard, basically to include any Scotch malt distillery that is kind of producing something that remotely resembles a core range. I put it in there and I plugged in the price. If you see green, that means that it's at the cheaper end. It's slightly less than the average price. If you see dark green, um, it's quite a bit less. And I'm talking about the price section here, all these prices that we have here. If you see um, red, it's higher than average price and dark red is considerably higher than average price. If you look at the, the producers, it's a similar thing. Glen Scotia, they're green because most of their product is green. If you look at Glen Murray, they're dark green because all of their product is green. In fact, some of it is dark green, so they're even better. The darker green, the better, let's say, or the cheaper. Glendronic looks expensive here because if you look along, you can see that their 18-year-old uh, at that big jump in price has gone dark red, and that skews things for them. But what we have to remember about Glendronic, and I've made a note here, we're talking about sherry, cask maturation. So when we talk about price versus value, we have to be very mindful of these dynamics. Things like this can get involved. So we always have to apply a bit of rational intelligence. So now it gives us average pricing. So for a young whiskey, a non-age statement entry level, we're looking at an average price of £36. 10 to 12 year old right across the range now that it's opened up that's jumped up quite a bit to 40 pounds average 59 pounds for a 14 15 16 year old 18 year old average has jumped up to 92. now this is skewed quite heavily by things like the lefroy uh, uh 18 year old at 190 pounds it's not really core range if we deleted that and put it in a zero and we decided that we were going to ignore that lefroy we could look down and see that that uh oops Let's do it properly. We should see that that drops down. Yeah, that £92 or whatever it was drops down to 87 So it's a full £5 cheaper. That pulls it down. So we can see, and I've made a note there, that that Lefroy 18 is skewing that column. 21-year-old, average price of £128. The 25 is still in there, but just for curiosity, honestly, we're at ridiculous prices, £276. And then for a cask strength release, this is cask strength stuff, batch release stuff, so Glenlivet Naduras, Glenfarclas 105, Aberlau Rabunas, um, Tomatin cask strength, Aaron Bothy, all of these, the average price of that cask strength release is £61. So there you go. Now, what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to go in and drill into one of these one at a time and and share with you what I discovered. And some of it is quite eye-opening. My patrons have been in here digging around already, so there's no surprises for them. But there may be for you guys, and I hope it's of interest to you. Graham Fraser, is there a trend for Diageo single malt soy? Consistency. 
consistency of presentation, consistency of price. That's the trend for Diageo, with some exceptions, like Villain 12, for example. £90, £110, £125 in the space of four years. So there are exceptions. Lagavulin 16, it's been the same price, honestly, for, for as long as I can remember buying it. You can buy Lagavulin 16 pounds for 50 pounds, 60 pounds. The top end you pay 65, but you can get it at Costco for even less than 50. It seems like it's been that price for 10 years. Kleinleash 14, it's still the same price. Open 14, still the same price. I, I'm, I'm really surprised at some of the prices now that I've included Diageo in here, and you'll see that as it, as it spreads out, as it goes through. Hoyt is saying, picked up Glen Murray 25, Portwood, for a great price. Peter Box is saying, thanks for doing a spreadsheet. Very helpful. Thanks, Peter. I hope you do find it helpful, even if, even if you're not buying in the UK. It kind of gives you a gauge on price. And, of course, that depending on what route of distribution, what route the supply chain takes to get to you, uh, not just tariffs, but agreements with distributors and how much margin they place on it and the retailers, how much co uh, control they have over the prices that they are selling at and things. It does mean that things that are cheap or inexpensive to us or good value to us can be expensive elsewhere in the States. And that can happen exactly the opposite way around. You guys are getting some great deals on things that we have to pay a wee bit more for. It's bizarre how it works out sometimes. So with those more caveats added, this is just, uh, so much of this exercise is just teasing it out, just trying to find contrasts, trying to find surprises and having a bit of fun. There is no science to this and I hope you're not here for fact and science. Everything that I've put in here is true, it's accurate, but it's very, it's a blunt way of arriving at these conclusions. Um, in my glass here, I've got one of the, the young non-age statement whiskies already poured. Um, and this has been consistent and I've talked about it in a channel before. But if you don't mind, we'll jump in and talk about the NAS young whiskies first. So many of us are drinking at this end of the scale and it's not going to surprise anybody that the top three are really quite inexpensive whiskies, Ochentosh and Speyburn and Tom and Till. Now the Tom and Till I'm talking about here is going to be the 10 year old, of course. The Speyburn is going to be the 10-year-old the ten in Ochentosh. We're talking about light whiskies here, very light, 40%. Not a lot of engagement for me in Ochentosh. This is the American Oak, clearly. Um, this is a non-age statement one. Um, so I've made a mistake here. The Speyburn will be the, the Brad Norak, which is non-age statement. And the Tom and Towel as well, I guess that's going to be their 10-year-old um, because they have a 12-year-old as well that will fit into the next category. But Ardmore Legacy... Um, Ardmore uh, Legacy is that that's the, the whiskey that started Whiskey Mystery, Phil and Deepa's channel, and they loved it. And despite it being 40%, the one that it replaced, the traditional, was an Unchill Filtered at 46%. That was a shame, but it's still out there, a peated whiskey for £29, doing okay. However, the ones I actually recommend are what's in my glass right now, Tomatin Legacy, despite this bottle being spiritier than the first two bottles I had, they were sweeter and richer. So maybe some batch inconsistency there. I don't know if it's going to continue like that. It's just this bottle I have. I'm fairly convinced it's got more spirity. But the one that I can't get away from is this Glen Scotia double cask. Um, I've got it. I've got it here to show you, and I'll try and show you when when I, the screen is a little bit bigger. But as we scroll down, we recognise some favourites: the Glendronach. That's their eight-year-old. Uh, the Glen Farkless, that's going to be their um, their 10-year-old product because they have a 12 as well. So that means the 10-year-old the has slipped into this category. Um, Macallan, that's the only Macallan I've even added because that's the cheapest Macallan. It's not a whiskey I would recommend to many people, honestly. And I've really, because of how much Macallan would skew the whole average pricing, I haven't included any Macallans beyond this. Um, and then you go down and you start to see some expensive things. Some of them we really love. Colhoman, that's their Mahir Bay. It's loved and celebrated. But in the context of this brutal comparison, it looks expensive, as does the wonderful, amazing Ben Nevis. That's the traditional Ben Nevis, by the way. And here we've got um, the Lagavulin looking really expensive at £54 for their eight-year-old.
So no great surprises to me there, honestly. I can see that, uh, you know, there, there are some lower cost Taliskers out there, but honestly, they're not as good as the 10. I, I would pay just a, a pound or two more to have the Talisker 10 year old, honestly. In most cases, I'm talking about the storm and the sky there. Um, really what we're seeing is that for non-age statement and young whiskies at a good price, we're still struggling to beat this one that I talked about last year a few times. Glen Scotia's double cask, it's at 46% ABV. Um, it, talk, it does say it's unchill filtered on the back. It doesn't talk about natural color. I'm sure there's probably a dot of color added to this, but at 35 pounds for Glen Scotia double cask, forget about the fact it doesn't have an age statement doesn't meet all the ABCDs. Enjoy this whiskey. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. At £35, you are going to enjoy this whiskey. Tell me what you think of Ardmore. Tell me what you think of Tomatin. But especially tell me what you think of Glen Scotia double cask at sub £40, £35, the prices I found it online at. Scotch on the bio, Leanna's saying she's totally geeking out over the spreadsheet. Great information. Uh, and perhaps you're one of the, the guys that's in there looking at just now, Leanne. Um, I hope you do <laughs> enjoy it. I hope you do get some use out of it. Uh, Glen Scotia double cask is really sweet, in my humble opinion, says Luna Aaron. I'm glad that you agree, Jimmy Legacy, saying I paid $165 for eight-year-old Lagavulin with Christmas gift cards. That's a lot. So that's Canadian dollars. So even if we wind it back, it's about 80, 90 pounds. Wow, it's too much, Jimmy. It's too much. It's just too much. And Graham Fraser is saying, I wonder if recent rebrandings have increased prices and reduced value. Um, well, what's interesting, and I don't know if you caught it from that last uh, slide that I shared when I updated it this year, you can see Pulteney and Balblair have actually dropped, not by much, um, they've dropped in pricing to a year ago. So I think they've had a bit of a revision and the prices have softened here and there. And one thing I've noticed about Balblair and Old Pulteney is you can pick up flash sales on their products regularly on Master Malt and the Whiskey Exchange. Suddenly there's an offer where uh, the price has dropped a wee bit. Um, and I think that's true on Amazon as well. I'm not entirely sure. So it might happen uh, near where you are as well that there's some discounts to be had. And that kind of makes sense with the prices going up. John Della Cuisine is in saying, uh, Glen Scotia Double Cask was my first ever Campbelltown. It tasted like a liquid pecan pie to me, and I loved it. it. made me explore the region more. I think that's perfectly where it's pitched. There is a cheaper Glen Scotia, believe it or not, called, uh, I think it's called Campbelltown Harbour. I think it's called Campbelltown Harbour, 40%. So it's at the Gateway ABV as well, and it's even cheaper than the Double Cask. But you don't need to go down there if you're enjoying your whiskies and if 46 percent abv is okay for you go for the double cask go for the extra grip and engagement that the extra abv brings go for the fact that it's not been chill filtered and it's had nothing taken out of it it's 35 pounds nothing to talk about jimmy like is saying but the eight-year-old lager is twice as good as the 16-year-old lager i'm going to suggest to you that's the 48 percent abv five percent extra abv bringing that extra texture that lovely sweet sugary grippiness that we get from the lagavulin eight-year-old giving you so much more pleasure jimmy we know that that's what it's all about we have to remember that we are speaking from an enthusiast perspective of course but I think that that's where you're getting that extra engagement from the eight-year-old lager. And I have to say, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Indy Ingot, that looks like a new name. He's saying, Aquaviti, do you know if the Springbank 15-year-old 2015 bottling was 100% sherry cask? 15-year-old, um, I don't know for sure. I don't. Uh, Springbank uh, are well known for being really lazy with their labelling. They will tell you, the, the staff and the people, they know and they tell you and they share it quite widely, but the labelling doesn't say. You only know uh, the 12-year-old cast strength one year to the next by the ABV. They don't really tell you how the ratios have changed. And I don't really know how much um, how much uh, sherry cask would be in a 15-year-old. It's quite a sherry experience, but there would be, I, I imagine, some bourbon in the mix. Sorry, I can't help you, but it's nice to welcome you in if it is a new name, my friend, in the ingot. Uh, 
uh, Liam Diamond is saying, do you happen to have any insights into why some countries have different ABVs for the same bottling? In Canada, HB12 is 43, whilst other places have 40%. Canada usually often has it at 40, I think, as well. 40 is the domestic ABV. 43 was always a legacy thing. It's frustrating. Lafroy 10, um, uh, Highland Park, as you mentioned, so many whiskies suffer from that. We suffer. The export strength is, remains at 43, and, uh, and, and we get it at 40. It's so frustrating. What's worse is that we get some things here. Buffalo Trace in the States, for example, is 45, and we pick it up here locally at 40%. It, it, it renders a, a, what I understand to be a very good bur bourbon really thin and watery. It removes so much out of it, more than just the, the spice and the prickle and the ABV. It removes so much out of it. To reduce the ABV, you're adding water. That's what that's that's what's happening. So it is a pure frustration. Multi mission is saying probably because people weren't all too happy with their new price setting. The fifteen year old old pulp they priced at the discount is seventeen, the eighteen for the price of the old twenty one. What's that about? Uh, we've done it to death, Menno, haven't we? We've talked about the, the realignment of Old Pulteney's pricing, and it is a big, big shame. They've recently brought out, I noticed today, a 16-year-old at £74. Still not inexpensive, still not cheap by any means, but we've got uh, something closer. It's, I don't know how that relates to the... I think the 15 is about 65 or something, and would that be right? £74 for the 16-year-old. The I don't know if it's going to be core range. I only saw it on one site. I think it was Master of Malt. I haven't tried it. It's not a recommendation I can make, but it's interesting that there might be some changes. Um, and I don't know how successful the new range has been for Balblair and Old Pultney, honestly. Um, I haven't been buying a lot of it <laughs> since the changes, honestly. Um, Sachin is in saying, I find Buffalo Trace to be really thin too. Sachin, thank you so much for your recent gift, my friend, that arrived through the post. That's really, really generous of you. You're a superstar. You'll spot it sitting over my uh, right shoulder. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you, my friend. Cheers. You would all had a chance to meet Sachin when he was on for a wee game of Is It A Space Side a few weeks back. And Jimmy is shown off saying he gets a 43% like they do in the USA. Well, Punk is saying there is a litre bottle of Buffalo Trace, 45% available, but not at all the time. Yes, I I think I was vaguely aware of that, that you could get your a hold uh, of some 45% Buffalo Trace. is what they get in the States, essentially. Um, frustrated that we... I, I guess maybe because they're selling it to, to a market that's probably going to buy it and just fill it with ice and coke or something. Um, but it, but it is a shame. And actually, Saint Eagle Rare is a much better offering from the same distillery. Absolutely, forty five percent ABV, ten year old age statement as well, and not too expensive. Often times, let's have a wee look at now. Let's quickly go through this. Look at the ten to twelve year old category, and look at some surprises that we have here. Thanks to everybody, by the way, for picking up. Uh, and give me such good feedback on the Hero Whiskies videos that went out last weekend. Um, I'd been sitting on that for a while, and I wasn't sure how it was going to go down. I wasn't sure how it was going to be received. Spiritworks Tom has bought me a dram to say, here I have been on here much of late. Uh, so I thought I'd grab you a dram to make up for it. Tom, never ever feel any guilt. This is not church. This is the pub. This is literally the V pub. It's here all the time, live or on replay, to fit around your life when you're in the mood, when you can be bothered, when you can make it. And if you can't make it because you're not in the mood or you're doing something else, then this has to fit around your life and mood, my friend. I'm just very grateful when you do turn up. Um, and thank you very much, Tom, for your constant support and your virtual drama, my friend. Cheers. Spirit works, Tom. I'm trying to be careful what I sip tonight as well. I'm driving in the morning again. Tommy Elmer is saying, I do miss the Lefroy 10-year-old cast strength. Well, that's an annual release, Tom. So you, you will get it, um, but it's another frustration for us because usually in the UK, you can pick up uh, online supplies of it sometimes. But usually in the UK, the 10-year-old cast strength from Lefroy, batch by batch, is distillery only. <laughs> you guys can buy it free shelf in the States. So frustrating. 
Jimmy Legg is saying, I, this is church. I am wearing my best whiskey apparel for it. <laughs> I'm happy for it to be your church, Jimmy. Absolutely. And uh, Whiskey Central is saying, uh, oops, I lost that comment. Did somebody... There it is there. I'm planning a live, but not sure when. My email is... Okay, that's to somebody else. It's not to me. I was just... Uh, because you were sharing an email in there, I had to allow the comment. And Helen is saying that Hero Dram Glen Caram 10 year old is a fabulous dram. So there, I hope there's no spoilers there. Hopefully you've all seen that video now. I held up uh, the Glen Caram 10 because I really felt that this was a real hero whiskey. And this is the type of thing I want to celebrate and I want to talk about and shout about it. Not just because it's 10 years old, not just because it's 46% ABV. It literally says no, unchill filtered and no added colouring and it states it on the label. Wonderful stuff, four out of four. But wouldn't you know it, the whiskey's pretty fantastic as well. And it's £35 or occasionally a wee bit less. So I'm going to share this 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 10-year-old and 12-year-old uh, list with you too. And here we can see our friend, the Glen Caddam, sitting there, bold, I've made it, bigger text to say, yes, this is a great value prospect for a 10, 12 year old whiskey. And obviously we can't not talk about the Aaron as well. Um, the Aaron 10 year old, exact same as the Glen Caddam, it says it on the label, 10 years old, 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural color stated on the label, Nothing to talk about. Well done, Aaron. £35. For me, it's a mood thing between these two whiskies. One of them's really light and fresh. The other one's richer and sweeter, much more kind of first fill bourbon type notes and flavours going on in the Aaron, whereas the, uh, the Glen Caddam's a lighter, brighter, fresher experience. Both amazing whiskies. And at that price, no criticism can be laid at them. Any surprises in here? Well, we can see our friend, the Kilkerran, down there at an amazing price, 12-year-old Kilkerran. Again, fully natural at £39. Wonderful stuff, nothing to talk about. Bunahaven. Bunahaven, it would be nice if you stated the colour on there, if you told us about the colour, but let's not let's not be petty. £39. Bunahaven, 12-year-old, nothing to talk about. Great stuff. Loch Lomond, 12-year-old, £37. 46%. Excellent stuff. And right up at the top here, we've got an interesting one. We've got Highland Park, very, very low cost, 12 year old, and a very expensive lineup at 30 pounds. I still have this and I tend to always have it in the cabinet because it's a nice gateway whiskey for a lot of people. It's a nice introduction to peat. It's a nice introduction into more kind of agricultural, vegetal, slight sourness. Highland, Highland Park still remains a very good whiskey. But I just wish that the better Highland Parks weren't so expensive. And I wish that the less expensive Highland Parks were a wee bit better. And it's a, it's a distillery that we all kind of move away from after it being such a great gateway thing for us. Eric Cunliffe has bought me a dram saying another wonderful V-pub and great spreadsheet, but alas, I have to hit back to the teaching class. You're doing your yoga thing. I know that you are. This is difficult for you to pick up live. Eric, it's great for you to drop by and leave a wee dram. Thanks, Roy. I'll pick it up on the replay later tonight. Can I say thank you to everybody that does pick this up on the replay? Thank you all so much. I made a promise last week and I'll continue that promise. Uh, if you are picking this up on the replay, please leave a comment underneath um, and I will uh, interact with you there. I will reply to your comment. Thank you so much for watching. And Gary is asking why Highland Park is in red. That is because as a producer, Highland Park are higher priced than average. All the green here are lower priced than average. The light green, are just slightly lower than average. The dark green are quite a good bit lower than average. And they also kind of, you know, you can see if I've written next to here, I've written if they're kind of pointing more towards more natural presentation as well, they also have a yes written next to them. It doesn't mean that all four ABCDs are, are ticked, but Ben Romack and Aaron and Glen Caddam and Glen Morangy, uh, you know, despite the Glenmorangie 10 year old, they're, they're higher uh, range products. The 12 year old La Santa and the 14 year old Quinta Ruban are brought out a better ABV for a more engaging experience. So I've kind of used a bit of um, 
a bit of license there just to suggest yes to some of these producers that they are maybe more pointing towards an enthusiast presentation. Down at the bottom, we see the villains. Bal Blair are appearing down the bottom now. Altmore has always been quite an expensive uh, release from Dewar's. Uh, Fetter Cairn, ridiculously expensive for that 12-year-old Fetter Cairn. I don't know where they get their pricing from, honestly. Royal Brackler is expensive too. Mortlach, expensive. Glen Turret, expensive. Bladnock, the new 10-year-old. People rave about it. People really love it. So we have to give these things context. And that Edredour is looking expensive down there. That's the 12-year-old Caledonian at that price. Can be picked up cheaper than that, honestly. And I think that that is still a fantastic whiskey. It wouldn't stop me recommending it to somebody. But in this list, it does appear a wee bit expensive. So there's, there's where the value, I think, is in the 10 to 12-year-old category. Loch Lomond are bringing it. Bunnahaven, Coquerin, Glen Cadam certainly are, and certainly, and up here, the best producer of value last year, Anok, £31 for the 12 year old. Excellent stuff. So that's the 10 to 12 year old. I'm going to pick up the 14, 15, 16 year old in a wee minute and share some of that with you. Actually, saying, could you do blue, red for us, colorblind folks? Oh, wow, I didn't even consider colorblind people and I'm amazed how many colorblind people are, are out there from doing the blind challenge um okay might need to rethink that um yes thanks uh, actually sorry about that Jimmy like saying do you know how many whiskies uh, HO has for sale out there HO it's over 30 I think are you talking about HP maybe um, huge range, uh, gets confusing how much they change it about. And the flavour chase is saying, what do you make of Aaron's new range given that they have discontinued Aaron 14, which was immense in my opinion. Two years ago, Aaron 14 was my whiskey of the year, the very next year it, it was discontinued. But Aaron are still doing amazing things and they will continue to build on that range. I don't have any doubt about that. Everything I'm trying from Aaron just now is at least good to very good. I almost made their 18-year-old uh, my whiskey of the year last year. I was so struck by it. I need to get another 18-year-old. I don't have any on hand right now. So rich, so cherry cask, so so good. And as Aaron is becoming more and more mature, it's getting better and better as they're getting better at their craft with more mature stocks. They've just this week released an official release of a 25-year-old. We can buy official bottlings of 25-year-old Aaron now. They've been going since 1995. They can produce that now. Amazing stuff. And a really good value producer, honestly. Sedegiv is in. I recognize the icon, and I'm sure I've said the name before. It's nice to welcome you. I have a soft spot for spreadsheets. I have a spirits inventory list. My wish list keeps growing. Thanks for the new list. I am terrible at spreadsheets. These are brutally basic. As long as they're serving some kind of purpose tonight, they're certainly help me, helping me to talk about it. Let's look at the 10, sorry, let's look at the 14, 15, 16 year old products um, and see a surprise here. Look at what's at the top of that list. Dilwani from Diageo. Look at what's second, Klein Leash from Diageo. Now, before you get at me, I know that a lot of you out there don't really get on with Dilwani. You think it's just a bit too light. I love that Dilwani. I love that 15-year-old. I love the honey sweetness of it. I don't mind that it's 43%. I think it's a tremendous wee whiskey. A 15-year-old whiskey at £38. Are you telling me you're going to complain about the fact that it's not at 43%? I would love it to be 46 I would love that warm tub condensation to have 46% ABV behind it. I would love Dilwani to be in full force. And I would love to have it and probably pay 42, 44, 45 pounds even, a bit more for it if that if that was a presentation. But regardless, we have the 115, a 15 year old single malt whiskey at 38 pounds. How can we complain? I was astonished. I knew this, I was aware of this, but in the context of how I view the whiskey landscape, I always forgot about the 115. And doing this little exercise shows us how good value it is, but come on. Look at what's next behind it. Klein Leash, 
Diageo again, the, <laughs> the company that everybody likes to pan. They're bringing us a 14-year-old Highlander from potentially one of the best, the best distilleries that exists in the Scottish whisky production landscape. 46% ABV, £42, 14-year-old Klein Leash. Honestly, we have to applaud this. Yes, it would be nice if they stated that they didn't uh, chill filter the Klein Leash and they didn't add colour. It would All of this would be nice. But Diageo have been utterly consistent with us. And when they bring out special releases every year, they bring it out in enough volume for us all to get it if we want. We're not beating each other over the head and cues and things when it's a real release from Diageo. I think that also should be applauded, that inclusivity. If we go down, we can find another couple of Diageos that are quite high up there in the Oban and the Nakandu as well. Glen Murray's up there, fantastically well-priced range right across the board. They're a green distillery right across. And Glen Morangie are green as well. That Kintaruban is a 14-year-old now for £50. That's not bad, and it's certainly under the average. Glenn Farkless, 15-year-old. You can complain about the inconsistencies, that one bottle's amazing, the next bottle's just not quite as good. But 15-year-old sherry matured whiskey for £53. It's excellent, honestly, and it's 46%, the 15-year-old as well. Loch Lomond, that's the new 14-year-old at £53. Again, another great value proposition from Loch Lomond. Ben Romax 15 alongside the Glen Scotia 15, we've already talked about. Somebody being able to pick that up at £45 is incredible. And Glen Cadham, 15 year old, the big brother to the 10 year old I've been talking about at £58. Great stuff. And down here, the Glendronic is red. It looks expensive. That 15 year old, it's £63, but it's exclusively sherry, mature, dollar or so. And Pedro Jimenez, £63, 15 year old, fully natural. That sherry cask makes it. A wee bit more expensive. Look at its uh, look at its peer in the Tamdu. Exact same presentation, fully sherry matured. Uh, different uh, no PX in the Tamdu, of course. It's just fully oloroso. Um, Seventy nine pounds, quite a jump in price there. But again, fantastic whiskey that might not necessarily stop me recommending that 15-year-old Tamdu to somebody if I felt it was going to go down well. And there we go. That's our uh, uh, 14, 15, and 16-year-old. I'm really, we have to applaud 15-year-old Dalwini at £38. It's incredible value, honestly. Open this, pour it, and, and, and criticise it if you want. Talk about it being light whiskey. I actually think it's got a lovely texture. I think it's okay at 43%. If we're going to have a gateway whiskey, if we're going to have something to start a flight, why not have it at 15 years old? Why not have a, a lovely honeyed Highlander and Dilwani to do that at £38? And Klein Leash, I've been banging on about it for years. It's, it's great stuff. There's nothing to argue about there. We're going to move on to the 18-year-olds in a wee minute. Let's see what you guys think of any of that. Longmorn 16 is very affordable in Sweden, about £61. Um, what did I have the Longmorn here at? Have I got the Longmorn on this? Yes, £85, quite a bit more expensive. Oh, sorry, this is the Longmorn 18. So the Longmorn 16 isn't in this, I don't think, because it's been replaced by the 18-year-old now. So it's a bit more expensive. It's good if you can get that long row at that plate, that price, Robert, um, because honestly, it's a terrific whiskey. I know I bang on about the old Longmorn 16. Uh, the new Longmorn 16 is just different. Um, and I think it's still a wonderful whiskey. Interestingly, it was what, what Tim was sipping when, when he joined earlier on tonight. Akshay is saying Dalwani 15 all the way. And Sachin is saying, I drank a bottle of Dalwani 15 recently. Lovely honeyed whiskey. Neil Laverty is saying, I picked a Tullibardin 15 at £49 on Amazon. Well pleased. Tullibardin as well. I've put Tullibardins in here, but the range is kind of a wee bit all over the place because so much of the Tullibardin range is non-age statement. Um, so, you know, I have to start picking individual ones. But Tullibardin does come in. I've got it down here. It's £53. You got it a wee bit cheaper. It was a good price, Neil. Um, but Tullibardin is in here and it's green. It is better than average pricing. Tullibardin have still to find their stride. I don't know. 
they, they just almost make it. They just almost make it. I'm glad you're enjoying that one, though. And uh, Whiskey Novice Jim is in. He's saying, as soon as I stopped making lists, I started killing bottles. It's strangely liberating. Hey, I know all about it, Jim. Absolutely. Okay, let's uh, let's go in and have a look at the 18. Uh, last year, a year ago in September, when I was talking about the show, I went out and bought a bottle specifically for this uh, topic. And I still have it, and I still have a lot of whiskey left in a bottle. Um, but that's more to do with the amount of whiskey that I have here rather than how much I am uh, enjoying owning this in my collection. This is Loch Lomond's 18-year-old. It's not the cheapest 18-year-old out there. I'll show you what is the cheapest 18-year-old. And this is where we apply some of our rational intelligence to this as a community. Our cheapest 18-year-old at £66 is Glenfiddich. But it's 40%. And I have to say, it, it's quite thin to me. If you were going to gift a whiskey, if you were giving it to somebody, it's a great 18-year-old whiskey to gift. Maybe not one that you would buy as an enthusiast. The same for any... Uh, rendition of Deverin, Glen Deverin, the Deverin, depending on whether you buy it uh, domestically or travel retail. We've got a, an 18 year old here at £67, 40% ABV again, but look at this Loch Lomond. 18 years old, 46% ABV, and it says on the back non chill filtered. No mention of natural colour. We therefore assume that there is indeed colour added to this 18 year old, but I'm going to forgive it for that and I'm going to pour a wee dram. Been saving myself for this one because I remember this from last year. I remember just how complex this was. I remember the funk that existed in, in there. I remember the sour and sweet orangey notes. And it's all still there. You've got that damp, mulchy funk. 18-year-old Loch Lomond, 18-year-old single malt scotch whiskey for £68. Deanston, 18-year-old, £75. I'll tell you, I just picked that up on a, on a deal on Amazon for 60, uh, £64. It dropped even further than that, down to £60. And it's not the old Deanston. This is the new Deanston. This is 18-year-old Deanston under the new packaging, which is distilled in this century. Much better Deanston, in my opinion. Just my opinion. Knock Do Anok, 18 year old, fantastic whiskey, 76 pounds. Another Diageo product in there, Talisker, 18 year old, at 77 pounds. That's incredible value for Talisker. 18 year old Talisker, 45.8% ABV, 77 pounds. And the amazing sherry cask Aaron in there at 85 pounds. An incredible whiskey. A wee bit pricier, but we have to remember we're talking about sherry cask again, and that theme does pop up. Let's go down to the 18-year-old villains here. There, there is our uh, Bal Blair. There's our Pulteney in there as well. Altmore, as I say, always expensive. Bunahaven 18 has taken a huge jump in price recently. That's gone from being a 90, 95 pounds whiskey to 100, 110, now 120 pounds. Quite a big jump. And what's skewing the average price of the 18 is that Lefroy 18, which is only occasionally available, but I wanted to keep it in there regardless. If we take Lefroy out, the average price drops instead of being about 90, between 90 and 95 being the split, the split would be between uh, here 86 and 90. So uh, it would uh, it would make the Glenallachy, Glengoyne and the Tomatin uh, seem uh, so that's basically, that Lefroig is flattering those three whiskies there right now, making them look a bit better priced. Again, Glengoyne 18 at £90, Glenallachy 18 at £90, and Tomatin 18, they all have a place. Glen Scotia as well, uh, slightly pricier, but £86 for uh, that Glen Scotia from Campbelltown. Nothing to talk about, the Loch Lomond uh, 18 in my book takes the uh, laurels on the 18 uh, year old category it's not an it's not a whiskey you could recommend to everyone it's a little bit funky it's a little bit sour it's a little bit challenging there are other whiskies such as the wonderful Aaron 18 the amazing Anok 18 
that you could uh, recommend to somebody looking for a more decadent, richer, rounder, smoother experience. But this is incredible stuff. Somebody's mentioning the Glen Murray Donner, Donner Pass whiskey, that Glen Murray 18 is outstanding and a completely different presentation from everything they have below. Absolutely, that's part of their heritage series. They've beefed up the presentation. It's a great whiskey, Glen Murray, 18 year old at 74 pounds, just a few pounds more than this Loch Lomond. And that's sweeter. There's a slight dairy. There's something in Glen Murray that marks it out as being a little bit different as a space cider. And I think sometimes in certain contexts, it can work really, really well. Jimmy, like you're saying, Funky and Sir are my middle names. I wonder how you got on with Loch Lomond, Jimmy. Alistair Gray is saying, what about the Glen Turret 25? <laughs> Bargain, uh, the less we talk about Lalique inspired 25 year old Glen Turret, the better. Because it's not fully available out there in, market, in the market, I couldn't incorporate Glen Turret uh, into this lineup. But I think in most of these categories, it would have been one of the villains down in dark red at the bottom. You can pretty much guarantee, um, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Glen Turret, we have to remember just how small a distillery it is. But that doesn't excuse the ridiculous pricing that it's come out at recently. Let's jump to our second from last category, the 21-year-old, and have a wee look at this. I don't have much of this on hand. But we'll have a look at it anyway. Um, I'm out of my Anok 24-year-old. Um, you could argue that it could go on here against the 21-year-olds um, or in the 25-year-old category, but it was priced here at this point alongside this Tom and Towel 21, £114, pounds, 115 £116 that order. So again, we've got the, the Deverins up here again, really cheap, but look at this Nakandu. Okay, it's low ABV. I think it's 43% Nakandu 21, £84. Pounds. Diageo, again, bringing it. £84 for a 21-year-old malt whiskey that's an absolute cracker. High, high quality. We would like it to be presented better, but at £84, are we really going to shout at them? 21-year-old. It's even cheaper than Glenfarclas 21, which is heavily um, talked about as being one of the best value 21-year-old whiskies out there. Again, Glenfarclas a wee bit inconsistent. Sometimes the sherry cast to use are amazing, sometimes a bit less. At that price, come on, it's, there's nothing to argue about. Glen Cadham, £100 for their 21-year-old. I'm not familiar with their 21-year-old. I would like to spend a bit more time with it. But again, that's quite tempting at £100. Look at the villains down at the bottom. Royal Brackler, £192. And Fetter Cairn, this, this, is, this is just comedy stuff here. £200 for Fetter Cairn. I mean... I feel really sorry for the people that make Fetter Cairn whiskey, the people that work at that distillery, that somebody's taking their product and trying to put it out there. Are you telling me that Fetter Cairn is flying off the shelf at £200 a bottle for a 21-year-old? Somebody is somebody is telling somebody else fibs. I don't know what's going on there. Sorry to go on in a rant. And there's the Bovenny that was that came up earlier, £155. Makes it look a wee bit expensive. But as I discussed with Tim earlier, quite a decadent and pleasurable whiskey. Aaron, 21-year-old, is still included in there. But as I said, Aaron has just released a 25-year-old expression as well. Um, I hope that. I hope you find some interest in there. But Nakandu, come on. Nakandu, 21-year-old at £84. W would you pick a Deverin over it? I, I wouldn't. Um, I would try them. Honestly, I would try them. But I'm drawn to the Nakandu. Jimmy, like I say, I never see any fetter cairn, so it must be flying off the shelves. I don't think so. Don't pass whiskey saying, love Anok 18, stopping up for the eventual rebrand. Yeah, I wonder who stocked up in all the Anok 24. We can't get our hands on the Anok 24 anymore. It's gone now. Um, but uh, hopefully when I shared that with you last year, you know, the Barflies were able to get their hands on some Anok 24. If, it's your, if you were willing to pay 100 pounds plus on a bottle of whiskey but you would have got a very very good mature bottle of complex interesting good quality scotch whiskey presented very very well for that 114 pounds <laughs> need to remind you i know you can't buy it anymore but it is still on shelves out there 24 year old single malt scotch 46 percent abv natural color it says it in the label and non-chill filtered it says it on the label 
for £116. I appreciate that you may be in a, a location that pay, you have to pay more than that, but I bet you it's still a damn good deal and a damn good price. Unfortunately for us in the UK, it's mostly gone now. Uh, it's kind of evaporated, but it was good while it lasted. Inverhouse, please don't screw up Anok for us. Please don't screw up Nokdu. It's a tremendous distillery. We're in love with it. Don't rebrand it. It looks brilliant as it is. Don't change the price of the core range. If you do change the core range, just bring us back our 16-year-old ex-bourbon, please. Um, amazing stuff. And finally, I'm going to close out with the cask strengths. It's going to be no surprises what takes the plaudits here. Um, if you look at this, we can see Glenfarclas 105, 48 pounds. Now, it used to have a 10-year-old age statement. Now, it doesn't, but we know it's 8, 9, 10-year-old at the youngest. 60% ABV, great value, nothing to talk about. Got a bottle on hand always. Aaron, Bothy, wonderful value. Coquerin cast strength, nothing to talk about. Amazing value. Glenallachy, 10-year-old, great value. But look at this. The killer cask strength, the king of all the cask strength regular releases. It comes out twice a year, spring bank uh, cask strength. Uh, yes, it does change each release batch to batch. Yes, it's tough to get a hold of, but it's 55 to 60 pounds and just amazing stuff. Glenlivet, I'm talking about the Naduras here. Tomatin is their cast strength. Ardbeg, that's the Oogie Dal in this example. Glengoyne batch cast strength. Um, Glendronic cast strength. Uh, not always available, Glendronic, but reasonable value. Again, um, uh, when you can get a hold of it, of course. Um, and then look down, holding up the bottom of the pack is Aberlour's Abuna at 80 pounds. There was a time that that would have been up here alongside the Glen Farkless, but those days have gone now. Sherry Cask Whiskey. Uh, they're charging 80 pounds for us to engage in that. Casks and Ashes has bought me a dram, so he's all, always entertaining and educational, Roy. I don't know how tonight's gone, my friend. Uh, I'm doing my best. It's interesting to me, and I just share it with you in the hope that you find interest as well. Looking forward to the challenges. Coins arriving soon. Uh, uh, so I, of course, you bought it. Everything is shipped. It's well on its way to you, my friend. You can let me know when it arrives with you. I'll raise this glass of Loch Lomond 18 and say thank you very much for your virtual dram. Cheers. I'm trying to remember your name. Casks and ashes. Lol, well, that sounded like a prayer to Inverhouse Aquavitae. I think it should be. Graham Fraser is saying White and Mackay seem to have priced their three whiskies for different markets, starting with cheap Dura, middle range Fetter Cairn, and expensive Dalmore. How about cheap Dura, cheap Dan the Villain, expensive Fetter Cairn, and expensive Dalmore? That's the way I see it. Uh, all the distilleries are capable of making amazing things. I got, I've got an independent Jura through there that I'm really loving right now. Um, I've tasted independent Dalmore that I love. I've tasted uh, it. It happens the way it's presented, the way it's put together, the way it, it makes it into a bottle. It doesn't always speak to us. It doesn't make it bad whiskey, but it makes it whiskey that for some reason a lot of us don't engage with. I think so much of that is to do with price, but I think so much more of it is presentation, honestly. Now, Buna is $99 Canadian here and has been for years weird. Uh, buy it. Well, you can, Jimmy. <laughs> that's about that's about 50, 55 pounds, right? That's good value. Actually, you're saying a Buna 65 euros in France. You're getting it better than we are. Um, chances are the prices are going to go up. But I've, I've, again, Aberlour, uh, France is its biggest market. Maybe the prices are keen for France. Casper, wait, you found a Jura you like. Yes, it was uh, Douglas Lang, uh, an old particular Jura. Uh, really good, really quite interesting, characterful whiskey. Um, it's not a whiskey I would pour for lots of people all the time. It's just a very nice take on Jura. Very nice. Whiskey 101 is in. That's Nick saying Pete Head. Uh, okay, he's speaking to Pete Head. Nice to see you and Nick. Nice to welcome you again. And hopefully I'm going to start getting your name right from here on in. And you can add Highland Park cast strength, £60. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Highland Park have released a, a cask strength version as well. Not too expensive, £60. I didn't come across it when I was doing this calculation, but relatively new release as well and a good one to shout out, Alistair. If anybody's tried it, please share what you think. 
So there we go. I've done a lot of talking. That wasn't very visual, but hopefully it's uh, hopefully shared a little bit with you of where some fantastic value stands out. Dalwani 15, Kleinleash 14, Loch Lomond 18, um, Nakandu 21. Surprises out there. Wonderful whiskies. They might not meet the enthusiast dream of the ABCD's age statement, B for bottling strength, C for chill filtration, D dye, no colour added. But they're damn good whiskies. You can't make any claims about the quality. Um, so there we go. Don't pass time is saying big disconnect between fetter and prices versus what you're getting. In my opinion, yes. And I've tried them. I've even tried the 28-year-old. You want to know how much the 28-year-old is? 480 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, you can buy Glengoyne 28 year old for less than that. You can buy Glengoyne 25 year old for, uh, okay, Glengoyne isn't available 25 year old, but there's still lots of it out there. Glengoyne 25 year old for less than 300 pounds with pedigree, with established reputation. And Fetter Cairn just released a 28 year old um, at 42%, I think it was 42% ABV. 480 pounds i i just it's it's for it's not for me there are people out there that are buying it sure there are, there must be a business case behind it but i don't understand it and peter is saying not in 480 years okay jimmy like i said these 250 300 people here every week to hear you talk thank you so much dropped a wee bit now we're getting on a wee bit it's 11.30. I need to get this quiz on the go. I'm going to go over two hours again. I need to welcome in our friends. Before I do that, I'm going to just mention a couple of things that's coming up. Uh, the London Whiskey Show is a virtual event this year. It's a week-long event starting this weekend. I think it starts tomorrow. It runs for a week. There's lots of things to get involved in. The only reason I mention it is because on Saturday, I'm going to be hanging out at the Elixir stand. So virtually, when you come into that festival environment, you're able to pick sessions and exhibition stands and things. And I'm going to be having a, a, a relaxed chat with my friend Julie Hamilton, who works for Elixir. She's also uh, Julie, who you met from a recent VPUB, um, and she's at the helm of the Glasgow Whiskey Club as well. I'll be hanging out on the Elixir stand for, for with Julie on Saturday, 2 o'clock onwards UK time for, a, we think, about an hour. We're not sure. Um, so it's going to be cool to be involved in that and just to see how the whiskey exchange, just to see how the... Uh, the whiskey show manages to to bring and realize that virtual environment there i'm looking forward to that don't forget the english whiskey festival as well richard foster's project there's lots of publicity behind that now lots of things behind it it's gathered a lot of momentum if you just search on eventbrite for the english whiskey festival you can still get tasting packs there is still time to get them delivered to you in time because it's the 16th and 17th of october that's going to be a fun distraction that weekend to try some really fantastic whiskies that's coming out south of the border uh, down in England. Uh, really wonderful stuff and a great project. Uh, I hope that you're going to be involved in that. I'm going to try and involve, if we don't manage to get away because of lockdown, if we don't get that weekend away, I may be here. And if I'm here, I'm going to try and get involved in that festival as well. Uh, and I think I'm pretty much caught up. It's time for me to jump in and invite my... Uh, guests backstage to come in and join me for the quiz give me a thumbs up greg if you're good to join us i don't see, oh, i do see tim he's there i'll bring in greg and i'll bring in tim thank you both for being so patient behind the bar there and listening to my monologue <laughs> were there any surprises there for you Oh, not so much. A very interesting topic. And uh, I, I just checked. I bought my Nokando, 21 years old, in 2007, 52 euros, Roy. And I saw I it in, in a supermarket uh, recently at 65 euros now. So I don't understand Pernorica. You live in the continent, Greg. You do have the luxury of better prices there generally. Belgium. Holland, Germany, all have fantastic prices. You pay less than we do here. It's frustrating. What I'm trying to do here is, is, is kind of highlight 
these UK prices, what we're paying here, and hope that you can extrapolate that to find some interesting bargains or things that present as good value to you where you are. But 65 euros from a can do 21, that's incredible. Um, really incredible. What about you, Tim? Um, nothing uh, that really surprised me. I mean, uh, I did love the topic, though. That's one of the things that uh, I always discuss when I talk about whiskeys is the value and how much you're paying for it and whether it's worth it or not based on the average palate. Uh, but I did spend this uh, VPUB editing your spreadsheet, which I'll send to you, make it a little bit easier in the future for you to update. Wow, that's what you've been doing in the background. So this is what I needed when I went out to Patreon and I said, look, I'm not a spreadsheet monkey, but if there are spreadsheet monkeys out there, I, I'm very happy for that to happen. So you're going to send me a link. And I'll, send you, link. Yeah, I'll send you the spreadsheet updated. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an actuary by trade, so I spend most of my life in Excel. So... I'll update it with some formulas and make it a little bit easier for you to update. And that's perfect. Tim, you can come along anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Superb, my friend. Wonderful. I look forward to seeing that. And what I'll do is I'll share that. So everybody that I shared that link with, um, I'll, I'll share Tim's updated, slicker, faster, uh, more improved version. And it's probably a hell of a lot more visual as well. I should have spoke to you in advance this year at the VPUB tonight. Listen, boys, are you both ready to settle in for a little game, um, a little quiz at the end? Yeah, absolutely. I know, Greg, you're looking forward to this, right? You've always participated in the background. Yeah, it's fun, even if uh, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> well, I have to be honest with you both, and it's just my feeling. My feeling is often wrong. And I always tease that it's an easy one tonight. Yeah. But tonight, I think it's difficult. <laughs> oh my God. I think it could be tricky. Let's see how it goes. Listen, everyone, if you've never played, if you're playing in a lounge tonight, if you're in a chat, if you're watching live, if you're picking it up in the replay, you're just playing against yourself. There are no prizes for the quiz. It's just a bit of fun. It's meant to peak curiosity and just draw attention to certain things. Sometimes there are banana skins in there, and sometimes definitely there are ASAC questions. And then we might even be one of those tonight. I wish everybody the best of luck. Play along and share your scores if you want. It's fully optional and it's multiple choice. Sorry, Roy. What's the difference between ass hat question and banana skin? A banana skin is something that's there that's got an obvious answer that's probably okay. not the answer. Something that will trip you up or slip you up if you don't pause to think about it. An mm -hmm. ass hat question is just me bringing up a question just to be awkward or impossible or just being contrary or difficult that's the ask that questions it was free it was coined by jimmy leg he was i think he was the first one to declare the question as being an asset question and it's just kind of stuck to the point that we now have an ass hat emoji <laughs> in the vpub lounge yeah. um so there may be an asset question there tonight let's see let's see how we go on okay let's pull up a screen share Good luck, guys. Uh, you're keeping your own score, um, and I'll, dr I'll drop in from time to time to see whether uh, you would know the questions. But question one. This is a, a question from my wife. This is her question. Um, she joined on a patron-only lock-in a couple of Sundays ago. She had a really nice time. She enjoyed hanging out with all of you guys. You were amazing to her. Um, but she was in here tonight, and I said, give me a question. I was in question one. And uh, this is the question that she gave, so it's her fault. What's the oldest distillery currently operating in the lowlands? Is it A, Bladnock, B, Glen Kinshie, or C, Ochentoshan? What is the oldest distillery can, currently operating in the lowlands? Of those three, somebody's going to say Lindor's should be. It's the original abbey, the original distillery. They found uh, remnants of distilling there, but I'm talking about relatively continually operating, still recognizable as the original distillery today. I'm talking about of those three, which is the oldest. Would you stab a guess, Tim, or do you know this? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say A, uh, Bladnock. And and what about Greg? What would you think? I'm not sure at all. So we'll say B, Glen Kinshie. But you think it's sure. Glen Kinshie? Well, I have to say, Greg, the, the, the chat seems to more or less agree with you. Only Sid Martin, dogs have no uncles, a couple of others agree with um, Tim, unfortunately, Tim. But I can tell you that you're right. 1817 for Bladnock, 
1837 for Glen Kinshie and 1823 for Ochentoshin. So if you answered A, give yourself a point. As so we go on to question two, last month, Richard Patterson of White and Mackay celebrated 50 years. But what did he do to celebrate his 50 year anniversary working at White and Mackay? He's been there since September 1970. Quite incredible. What did he do last month to celebrate? Did he A, decide he was only going to focus on the Dalmore, B, release a single cask from 1970, or C, by releasing a new range of malts called the Dalmore Decades. What did he do in September last month to celebrate his 50th anniversary at White and Mackay? Sachin has said D, spill whiskey. <laughs> uh, Richard is well known for swilling out his glass with whiskey and throwing it on the floor to clean his glass. Always makes me nervous. Kilted Moose Scott is saying he threw whiskey all over his office. And Jimmy Legg is having a laugh saying made a cast strength whiskey. <laughs> uh, looks like Tim would have to be guessing. You don't look confident, Tim. What would you guess? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say uh, B, but that's a complete guess. I have no idea. Greg? Well, I hesitated between A, which I'm, I heard something like that, but then C makes maybe more sense. I don't know. It's pure guess. And B, he, he did it already. So I think it's C, but no, no. I can tell you that uh, the announcement in September for Richard Patterson's 50th anniversary that he was stepping back. Wow. And he's giving up responsibility, and he's going to be only focusing on the Dalmore. Fair know. enough. Cutting down the workload after 50 years, I think that's fair enough. Absolutely. So if you answered A, give yourself a point. We're going to question three. Lindsay Holman's seen a lot of great people turned 50 this year. He's been, he's been 50. For as long as I've been alive, Lindsay, he's been working at White and Mackay. Under various names, of course, Imparador, and it's had various names over the years. Blair Athol Distillery features a, a repurposed mash tun as a welcoming bar in its visitor centre. From where? Where does Blair Athol's mash tun bar originate from? A. Rosebank, B. Klein Leash, or C. Glenord? I'm giving you three Diageo uh, distilleries. Or let's say once upon a time Rosebank was Diageo, now it's Ian McLeod. B. Klein Leash or C. Glenord? If you've ever been to Blair Athol, it's quite a cool thing to go and see. Um, got quite a big room with this bar in it, this mash tun. I want to know where it's from. Do you know where it's from, Greg? No. So, pure guess a closed distillery or a, tw a sister closed distillery. So, I will say Klein Leash, but a pure guess. So you think it could even be the Brora Nashton? Is that what you're saying? Or just an old Klein Leash? Yeah, 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 way. But as they're restarting Brora, so do they build another one? I don't know. Okay. And Tim, um, are you going to agree with Greg or do you have your own uh, idea? Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with him. He seems uh, semi-confident. <laughs> so far, I have zero <laughs> right I have zero. to say that indeed you're correct, Greg. It is an old mash tun from Klein Leash that they repurposed to make a bar in Blair Athol's visitor centre. I've got a picture of it here. It doesn't prove its provenance in any way other than let you see how they've done that. Uh, nice. The mash tun obviously is one of the early parts of the process. Here we have bar stools to give us size and scale. It'd be good if somebody was actually in the picture, but... But there you go. Question four. Dr. Nicholas or Nick Morgan has written a book celebrating the history of Johnny Walker called A. Keep walking. B. Don't look back. C. The long stride. <laughs> so Nick Morgan, a famous, famous character from Diageo, uh, a head of uh, whiskey outreach at Diageo. Um, I think he would be a fascinating guy to talk to, honestly. 
uh, would be a wonderful guy to get on the show. Can't see it ever happening, but if Diageo allowed such a thing, if Nicol if Nicholas was interested, he would be amazing to have on. But he's written, he's actually written this book himself, The History of Johnny Walker. I'm going to try and grab a copy if I can, because I think I would be fascinated in it. But what has he called it? Has he called it A, keep walking, B, don't look back, or C, the long stride? Greg, give me your best guess, my friend. Oh, my God. I heard of it, but I don't know the title. And I guess the B is a banana skin and the A as well. So I will try C. <laughs> Process of elimination has taken you to the long stride. Tim, are you going to uh, go along with Greg or... Are you going to? Take uh, yeah, off? I'm going to go with it. Yes, yeah, see as well. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Oh, <laughs> cannily played. The Long Stride is the book by Ooh. Nick Morgan. I don't know when it's coming out. Uh, this is a recent story. I haven't seen it anywhere yet, but I'd certainly be interested in it. Tim Allot is saying, I have a point, and he's celebrating. Jock is saying, see, you pee. I got one right at last. I told you, listen, guys, I, fair play to you. It's wonderful to have so much humility playing in the chat in the lounge there as well because it is a tough quiz. Yeah, Here's a you. picture question coming up for the halfway point, question five. Clearly, I'm looking at a distillery that looks a wee bit beleaguered, a wee bit dilapidated, certainly a lost, closed distillery. But what am I looking at here? Am I looking at A, St. Magdalene in Linlithgow? B, Port Dundas in Glasgow? Or C, Rosebank in Falkirk? 3X Diageo Distilleries? A, St. Magdalene, Linlithgow? B, Port Dundas in Glasgow? Or C, Rosebank in Falkirk? <coughs> Did either of you know? No, but just because I love St. Magdalene, that, 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 that so did so beautiful whiskies, especially some 1982 vintages, I want to guess A, but I don't know. <laughs> just as a and tribute. I'll, yeah, um, I'll get uh, Rosebank. Well, we have a split. It's not Port Dundas because we're looking at a malt distillery. Port Dundas was actually the picture that was used in the VPUB last week. Um, it's either St. Magdalene or Rosebank for sure. And I can tell you, Tim, this point goes to you. Oh. This is Rosebank in Falkirk. Not much of it left remaining. Honestly speaking, they're going to have to rebuild it from scratch, Ian McLeod. Yeah. It's not like Bora where lots of the kit is still in place. The, the stills were stolen at some point, uh, Roy. Yes. Yes, lots of controversy surrounding the stories of what happened to Rosebank stills, for sure. Question six. High West in Utah release a midwinter night's dram. But who also released an expression of the same name? A, Glenn Levitt. B, Glenn Morangy. C, Glenn Fiddick. Who also released a Midwinter Night's Dram? Now, I'll admit High West, this is a persistent thing. This is a constant release from them. Uh, they release it chapter by chapter, batch by batch. But there was a producer in Scotland that released a Midwinter Night's Dram. I need to ask you quickly, guys, because the chat, the lounge has nailed this one. I, I haven't tried it, but I know it's part of the private edition of Glenmorangie, and I love the private edition. So, so B, sorry, answer B. Absolutely, absolutely. Although I don't believe it to be a private edition release. I think it was a seasonal release from them. It was put out at forty percent ABV. Okay. I might be wrong. Okay. It was quite a it was quite a low cost release. I think it was thirty five thirty pounds or less. Right, you're right. I'm mistaken. Uh, Forty percent release from them, but they had uh, a couple of years ago. Glen Morangy B released a Midwinter Night's Dram, and here we have on the left uh, uh, the High West Midwinter Night's no. Dram and the Glen Morangy. I'd like to try that High West. Yeah, me too. 
Question seven. Distillery Radermacher was founded in 1836, but where? Mm -hmm. A, Germany, B, Austria, or C, Belgium? Distillery Radermacher was founded in 1836, where? Now, I'm not going to suggest that it was making malt whiskey back in 1836, but I can guarantee it's making malt whiskey now. I heard of it and I even, I cannot check it because it's far. I even wonder if I don't have a sample of it. <laughs> wow, you could even have a sample of it. Or if it's Meno or Luna, so I'm not sure. <laughs> so you know. Ah, so Meno is in Belgium, right? Luna is in Germany. So uh, Max is in Austria. I'm not sure. Just because the name sounds German, I'm going to say Belgium, but I'm probably wrong. Tim. I will uh, just follow suit and uh, go with Belgium as well. That's another cannily played answer it is Belgium and I have to say we have a very always impressed by the knowledge in the crowd so so many oh, people managed oh. to pass that banana skin Radermacher to me sounds very German yeah but it is in fact a Belgian distillery in more recent years uh, releasing a single malt whiskey as well Belgian made single malt question eight Nadura or Nadira is a special release from Glenlivet and means what in Gaelic? What does Nadira mean? A, original. B, natural. C, formidable. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will say A, I'm almost sure. I'm looking at the chat to see how the chat goes, waiting for this to kick in. Tim. Uh, I will go with uh, natural just because uh, it seems like it fits that word a little bit more closely. How are you scoring at this point after seven questions? How are your scores? Are you willing oh to share? God. You don't need to. Oh, oh yeah, four out of se uh, seven. It's horrible. <laughs> I think I'm uh, at five out of seven. Wow, okay. you've hit the pass mark already. Tough one. Greg? You need a you need a mark to hit the pass mark of five. Yes. Unfortunately, my friend, it's not this one. Nadira oh. is natural. Oh, I confounded with Abuna. Uh, Abuna is original. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah, so maybe that's a, maybe that's a good example of a banana skin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unlucky, my friend. Listen, we'll still get you to a pass mark. Don't worry about it. Although I think the last two questions. Maybe tricky uh, from memory. <laughs> Let's see. Second from last, Wolfburn is the most northerly mainland malt distillery. Famously, it became the most northerly in the mainland because it used to be Old Paltney. Oh which is the most northerly? Which is the most northerly? Theory. Scapa. B. Avangaric. C. Oof. Highland Park. Scapa on Orkney, B, Avangaric on the Isle of Lewis, or C, Highland Park also on Orkney. I'm just asking you, which of those three distilleries is the most northerly? I will still say C, but I have a doubt with the... Uh, how did you say it again, Roy? Uh, uh, the B? Avangaric. Avangaric. First time I hear the, the, the pronunciation, Avangaric. Yeah. Red River. So, so Buna Haven is a foot of the river, Buna, and uh, Avon Jarek is a uh, river, Red Red River. There you go. And it's one of the smallest, right? Even less. That's than absolutely 20. tiny. That's right. Absolutely tiny. What would what would you say, Tim? You know, I feel like I've seen Highland Park advertised as the most uh, northern Scottish distillery, yeah. so I would go with them. But I, I. I feel like the other two are probably pretty close. Scapa is just under, if I remember well. Scapa is Highland just Park. a little bit further south of Highland yeah. Park. This split <laughs> the, the lounge tonight. There's lots of people torn between the two Orkney distilleries. A couple of people thought it was B, but not many. 
Um, so yes, C for Highland Park. Johan Lundberg is shouting from the rooftops that it's C. Alistair Gray said C. Lord Free Prefab C. Jock Kirkwall Orkney. <laughs> Dogs have no uncles is on six. Dancing Midget on six. Five. I'm looking for the high scores as we go into the last question. Six out of nine seems to be seven out of nine for Marky Mackinnon. At seven, is there an eight? Can that be beaten? I thought it was a tricky one tonight. It is hard. I don't Gary see Carew saying Highland Park isn't mainland the way. Absolutely. What I'm saying is uh, Wolfburn is the most northerly mainland distillery. But what is the most northerly? Nothing to do with question, mainland generally. Question is okay. Yeah. Last question, boys. You've got your pass mark, Greg. Well done. Yeah. Tim, you're, you're heading for a good score now. I believe you. this could get you to 8 out of 10, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Could be a really good score, 10. Which of these countries appear in the top 10 export markets for blended scotch? A, Latvia, B, Jamaica, C, Panama. Seriously, oh, no. you need to believe me. One of those appears in the top 10 export markets for blended scotch. A, Latvia, B, Jamaica, oh. C, Panama. So Latvia is in... Uh... It's one of Europe? the Baltic states. It's one of the Baltic yeah. countries. Very hard. Okay, I don't know. I say A, but I'm not convinced of my answer. This is an asset question, I have to be honest. <laughs> Tim. It's probably the two. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I, uh, Every time I follow Greg, I, he's been right. So I'll stick with it. I'll go with A. I'll, I'll take his answer. Following Greg has been a wonderful strategy for you tonight, Tim. Has been, yeah. I can tell you that it's paid off again. Latvia yes. is, believe it or not, the eighth largest export market for blended scotch. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely I'm unbelievable. Uh, everyone says because of the canal. No, I'm not so sure about that. I, I'm really, I'd, I'd love to know. It must, there must be a story. There must be history to it, everyone. I bet you it's something to do with marketing and converting the people there to an addiction to Scotch whiskey a long time ago. One that they found have found difficult to wean themselves off and back onto their palinkas and every other uh, liqueur and drink that they have over there. Lots of seven out of ten. Trent Smith. Richie Z, Richie, good to see you. Shane Lay is on seven. Dancing Midgey Glenn, wonderful score, seven. Robert Frederick's in seven. Casper nice. Henriksen is saying, really, absolutely. I can show you in my trusty companion here, the Malt Whiskey Yearbook. If you go to the data at the back, Latvia is appearing right here. Quite incredible. Crazy. Ingvar Rond was supposed to be on next week's show. He's not appearing anymore. He's kind of busy right now because he's just released the 2021 edition of the Malt Whiskey Yearbook. But two weeks from now, I'll be welcoming Ingvar uh, Ron, the, oh. the Swedish author of the yearbook. Nice. And uh, I had a tech check with him earlier today. We were just going to spend five minutes making sure the tech was okay. We spent over an hour chatting. Wonderful guy to talk to. Can't wait to have him on the show and introduce you to him all. And, uh, and I'll get a chance to thank him publicly for the effect he's had on my whiskey journey. I'm really glad that he's coming on board and he's already getting bitten by the by the bug of the VPUB in the community and he sees it, he's 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 quite impressed by it. It's, it's gonna be interesting to bring him in. I think he'll have fun. George O'Brien on seven as well. I'm looking for eight. Someone eight. At, at nine, boy. I saw someone at nine. Johan, you star nine out of 10. That is something to celebrate, my friend. Fantastic. That is something to celebrate. Nine out of ten. I think that was a really tricky one tonight. I don't think anybody's going to compete. I actually thought, Tim, that we'd be congratulating you as going oh, higher. Eight. Sorry. You did eight. You did eight, uh, Tim. Eight out of ten. I got eight, but I borrowed three of your answers, so I'll <laughs> just, uh, oh, I, got six. I got only six out of ten. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> right, Greg, how do we find you on YouTube, my friend? Greg's Whiskey Guide on YouTube? Yeah, that's all. And uh, same for the website with the dot .com in the end. And then that's it. Greg's Whiskey Guide. And that's my uh, painter's website now. 
<laughs> and and your paint website as well, of course, your art website. And Tim, how do we find you on Instagram? The Whiskey Influencer with yep. no E. No E. Yep, that's right. Okay, wonderful Goodbye. stuff. The legal way to to spell whiskey in America, that adding the E is an option. <laughs> option, absolutely. Definitely. Yes, wonderful stuff. Listen, guys, stay in the background if you've got the time. And once we're offline, I can raise a wee glass just to say thank you. Um, but it's been wonderful to have you both in. Thanks so much for participating in the quiz and, of course, in the game of Is It a Space Side as well. I'll raise a glass to Tim over in New York and my friend Greg over there in France and say slanchu to you both. Thank you so much for spending time with me tonight. Thank you, boys. And happy birthday, Graham, I see in the chat. <laughs> happy birthday, Graham. Oh, is it Graham Fraser's birthday? That's who I'm thinking. Yes, if it is Graham, Graham Fraser's birthday. Ah, 8 out of 10. I was hoping for a 10 as it's my birthday in two minutes. It's midnight. Let's, let's raise a glass in the chat. I'm going to even jump in the chat myself and raise a wee glass for my friend Graham Fraser. Say happy birthday, Graham. Um, there we go, and I'll raise a glass to you as well, um, just as it turns uh, a minute past midnight. Many happy returns, Graham. Slanchiva. Cheers. And thanks also to my friend for the virtual dram, 9 out of 10, the man who takes home uh, the plaudits for the quiz tonight, who does the, with a fantastic score and a really difficult quiz, honestly. Odd Johan Lundberg, great name as well. Johan, well done, my friend. Slanchiva to you. Thank you for your virtual dram. I've managed to get through tonight with just three drams. Wonderful stuff because I need a wee bit of an early bed tonight and I need uh, to be driving in the morning. So it's been absolutely wonderful hanging out with you guys again, talking about value in whiskey. I hope that if you're picking this up on the replay, you will engage with the conversation and leave a comment in this, in, down below. I promise you I will respond to your comments. Thanks to everybody that's joined in for hanging out tonight. Um, over 300 of you at one point, a wonderful VPUB. I hope you all got something out of it. If you did get something out of it, um, eh, leave me some feedback, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, either way, as long as it's polite, as long as it's constructive and as long as it's not personal, I am willing to receive um, any feedback whatsoever. This is a wonderful privilege to be, to be able to do this every week. And it's just great to have so many of you hanging out with me. I'll raise the very last of my uh, Loch Lomond 18 here. And I'll say thank you all for joining me again uh, on a VPUB. You might see me on Saturday if you're involved in the virtual whiskey show, if you drop along to the Elixir stand from two o'clock on Saturday. Um, if you, if not, I'll see you a week from tonight. And uh, I, because I've had to change the schedule, I don't know what it's going to be yet, the theme, but we always come up with something, don't we? In the meantime, thanks to all of you for hanging out with me tonight. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. Again, you're all very, very dearly loved, and I look forward to seeing you a week from now. Slant your barflies. Till next week. Cheers.